Hey, guys, how do I look on this one, huh? We're not here to joyride the toilets, Dale. If you can't get enough fun out of helping me buy new handle bushings, there is something seriously wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Hank Hill. What were you doing in Plumbing Isle? Need new Crescent Moon stencil for outhouse? <laughs> I'm doing home improvements, Con. Ah, trying to improve your home like putting lingerie on a monkey. Better to save up all your dog fighting money and buy ticket to Arlen Parade of Homes. I'll have you know that my house is part of Texas history. Yep, it was built by the great-grandson of Captain T. Anderson Kearney, who fired the first shot at the Battle of Gonzales. Hey, maybe I should enter my house in the Parade of Homes. Hey, who forgot to change the toilet paper? And no, this closet would look a lot bigger if you took out my shoes and replaced them with Nancy's. Well, we don't need any Hollywood special effects for people to see what a great house we've got. Hey, maybe we can put T. Anderson Kearney's brass boot remover by the door. Kind of an exclamation point for when people leave the room. Talking about old house beautiful, man. Don't, 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 don't swim up no bed pool, man. Talking about like, just like a dang old wood stilt, man. They don't see no, no double teams in his day, man. Well, thanks, Boomhauer. I just hope the people on the parade of homes say the same thing. <coughs> Welcome to the Bobby Hill room. No flash photography on the trolls, please. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Bobby, you know what might spruce this room up? A nice display case for your troll action figures with solid wood doors, you know, so people won't be tempted to steal them. Okay. Um, aren't they called troll dolls? <sighs> yes. Now, watch closely, Bobby. This house is going to be yours someday, and you're going to need to know how to take care of it. Can you hammer in a nail with a single blow? This isn't a circus, Bobby. But I could. Dad, help me. Help me up drowning. Oh, Bobby, you'd had such a good few years. It wasn't me. The wall's leaking. Oh. Good Lord, it looks like it's coming right out of the stud. It's okay. It's okay, babies. Daddy's here. Now, let's get you out of these wet clothes. Oh, what kind of a sick bastard runs a water pipe through a stud without installing a nail guard? I don't know! Well, the water damage looks pretty minor. Yeah, at Lone Star Home and Casualty, we see some doozies. The Matthew McConaughey water weenie claim comes to mind. Yeah, well, about my wall... Don't worry, Mr. Hill. We'll hire someone to come in here and get this wall fixed up before that Parade of Homes tour. Uh, I don't really like strangers touching my walls. Maybe you could just pay me and I'll get the supplies and fix it myself. Sorry, but company regulations require we use licensed and bonded contractors. But I can absolutely assure you they do a first-rate job. Uh, okay. Now, would you like to be tested for mold while we're at it? We usually do one after any type of water damage. Won't cost you anything. I guess. Sure, go ahead. Uh, excuse me. Do I need to file a claim for my loss? Yeah. Uh, assess them properly. I'm sure you know what to do with them. Don't leave any excess joint compound on the threads, and always wipe the pipes down when you're done as a courtesy to the next plumber. Now, let's see if that outlet needs rewiring. I'll do it. Just uh, hand me that voltmeter. Hi, I'm Steve Goodman. I'm here to check the room for mold. Huh, so that's what you use to test for it. Boy, I've never seen one of those before. You think I could give it a try, Steve? Nope. I'm done here. Okay, who wants to turn off the circuit breaker? Too late, I call it. Now remember, Hank, the Parade of Homes is not a competition. But this is what we're up against. It's pretty nice for new construction. Can I help you? Oh, uh, yeah, we're in the Parade of Homes next week, too. Hank Hill, single-story ranch style. We were just admiring your place. Nice shutters. Well, thanks. That means a lot coming from another parader. I'm still trying to get the place looking presentable. It's funny. I spent my whole life dreaming about owning my own house. Now all I dream about is the next thing that needs to be painted or polished or replaced. I love those dreams. One horn, but this wall looks pretty good. Let's enjoy it now before Bobby puts up that poster of babies dressed as strawberries. 
Hank, it's our first looky-loo. Okay, be cool. I'm cool. Welcome. Knocks pretty nice, doesn't she? That's solid oak hardwood. No pressed filler there. Now notice the- Whoa, whoa, whoa. You might want to save that for someone who's not on the clock. I'm Rob Hoagland, TechnoPure. Your insurance company sent me. Oh, uh, Hank Hill, what can I do for you? You can put your hand down and step two feet away from me. You may be contaminated. What? Your house has tested positive for mold. Ah! Yeah, uh, you might not want to take such deep breaths. I've got mold? Well, that can't... I mean, how does... God, is it hot in here? I'm really hot. Uh, Mrs. Hill, maybe you could get him a chair. I'm gonna make a small exploratory incision so I can have a little look-see here. There she blows, my great green whale, Aspergillus. You're lucky you caught this leak early before this mold really spread. I've got green stuff inside my walls and I'm lucky? Relax, Mr. Hill. Rob Holguin is going to do everything it takes to get rid of this mold and you're insuring with a concentrated chlorine solution to forced atmospheric dehydration. So wait, you're saying you're going to rub it with bleach and then blow it dry? <laughs> well, in layman's terms, yes. Well, I've got some bleach and a fan. I could probably do it myself. <laughs> Every joker with a bottle of Clorox and a tornado thinks he's an expert. Look, unless the job is done by a certified mold expert, such as myself, your insurance company will drop you like, well, I dropped this, but then there'd be mold on your floor. Hank, let him do it. He's a professional. Uh, can you guys get it done in two days? This house is on the parade of homes. This is the kind of thing they take a picture of and put it on their blooper reel. Yeah, lucky for you, Aspergillus is my specialty. I should have it calling me daddy in no time. So are we okay to stay here like this? Okay? Well, that's a medical question, Mrs. Hill. I'm not a medical doctor. Now I'll need you both to sign this waiver, which certifies I've informed you that's a medical question and I'm not a medical doctor. Hank, listen to this. Mold has been known to cause itchiness, asthma, chronic fatigue, and disorientation. Bobby, quick, what's your middle name, huh? When's my birthday? Here, follow my finger. Your birthday is... I don't know! I think the mole's got him! Help me, Dad! <sighs> Will you two just calm down? Now, it's just a little patch of mold. We'll let Holgan do his job, and everything will be always just piggybacked on my card. <sighs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Dale, take that dang thing off. We're perfectly safe here in the alley. Heck, we'd all be perfectly safe if we slept in Bobby's room. Sleep over? I'll get my jammies. Don't let him in, Hank. With his foot fungus, he'd just be tracking more mold into the house. That area between his toes is as rich and fertile as the Nile River Delta. Can we still have the sleepover? I'll hang my feet out the window. Attention! Mold patient zero! I knew your house not good enough for parade of home. Maybe next month. Parade of toxic waste dumps. <laughs> what? How could we still have mold? I thought you said you got rid of it. I did, from the leak. But there must be a secondary infestation. The latest sample from this room showed an airborne mold level of 500 parts per cubic meter. Aha! Uh -huh. Hmm, nothing. What are you doing? I can't get rid of this other mold until I find it, Mr. Hill. And insurance regulations require that we reduce the level of mold in here to that oh. found in the air outdoors. Bobby, quick, get inside! No, no, I mean stay outside! Get, get, get in the car and turn on the air conditioner now! Mrs. Hill, Mrs. Hill, it's okay. 400 parts per cubic meter is like a fly speck in a big gulp cup. Wait, wait, it sounds like there's almost no difference between the air in here and the air outside. What's the problem? Uh, I could try and explain it to you, but if you want this place ready in time for that parade of homes, it would probably make more sense for me to just do my job. Thank God. I thought this thing was broken. There's the culprit. Alterneria. Eh, you're not so tough now without your buddy Stacky Botris, are ya? Are you sure that's even mold? It could just be an old dust bunny. I wish it were a dust bunny. In fact, I wish this whole damn wall were full of real bunnies. But this looks like mold that's been here for 20 years. What's on the other side of this wall? <gasps> Our bedroom! Remember that night I thought I heard something? And you said it was nothing? Well, thank you. You just signed my death warrant. 
If we've been sleeping in this room with mold for 20 years, how come we've never had itching or asthma or any of those other problems we read about? Well, that's probably because the government hasn't found a scientific link between mold and any known health problems. Yet. Then why do you keep banging holes in my antelope? And if I don't bang holes in your wall, my conscience bangs holes in my head. Holguin here. I need backup. I got a buy room situation at Rainy Street. Hey, scrape that out more carefully, will you? It's a wall, not a pumpkin. Whoa, 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 you're gonna have to stay out of the hot zone. That's both bedrooms and the master bath. But where are we gonna... Automatic ice maker. Oh, boy. What? What, oh, boy? Seal off the kitchen. Now, hold on. This is good. Doghouse is hot. Aspergillus. All right, that does it. Everybody out now. Hey, hold on. I said stop. Mr. Hill, I understand you're upset, but you really don't want us out of your house. Yes, I do. Okay, but if I get on this walkie-talkie and call in a code Charlie, my guys will be out of here in 36 seconds flat. That's how long it'll take for your house to become worthless. What? Look, you've been informed there's mold in this house, which means if you ever want to sell this property... I don't want to sell. I plan on passing this house down to my son. Ooh, goody gumdrops. Thanks, Dad. A worthless mold house. Do you have any pet birds, Mr. Hill? No. Good. Can three family members share a living room without driving... ...several times to stop making that joke? Now go to your room. 18, 19, 20. Mr. Hill, you've got to get out! Uh, you get out! Your whole house is contaminated. The Negar environment's been compromised. The what? There's no time to explain how it wasn't my fault. Now move! That towel could be filthy with mold. Go, 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 go! Forget the toys. The insurance company will pay for everything. Now move! Leave it to you to make a hospital gown look unsexy, Hank. It says 123 Rainy Street. This is on the parade of homes? That can't be right. Hank? Oh, God, no, the Parade of Homes. Is today the fifth? Uh, this ranch-style rambler, with upgrades to the doors and windows and roof, uh, was built by the great-grandson of a... Uh, uh... Smile, Hank, I want to get a picture of you next to the mold. I know, girl. I know. Hey, what do you know? Aaron Brockovich has got mold. And Ed McMahon. Oh, he killed his dog, Muffin. Maybe we'll meet them at a survivor group. If Lone Star Home and Casualty is so interested in looking for mold, you should start with this room. It was growing on the soap. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about the mold in your hotel, Mr. Hill. They don't have a policy with Lone Star, so there's no potential liability on our end. They're arguing again, Hank. Or making love. You pick. Is that what you wanted? Making love. Uh, hey, yeah. You got a busted latch there, neighbors. Yeah. Anyway, my lady and I were wondering if you'd care to join us for a Lynchburg lemonade. Uh, thank you, but uh, we were just about to sit down to dinner. Ah, well, cool, cool. No baggy, okay. Y'all have a good one. Okay, who's ready for Peggy Hill's Coffee Maker Ramen, huh? <sighs> You'd think music that loud would kill the bugs, but it doesn't. I tried sleeping in the empty swimming pool, but, you know, the dogs. Can I just go home? I promise I'll put on one of those space suits. Dang it, Bobby. If T. Anderson Kearney could fight to give Texans a home, then I can fight to get yours back. Rob Holgan is going to need to use this boot remover on his ass when I'm done with him. Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Holgan. Sorry, he's at lunch. Can I take a message? You don't have enough room on that while you were out slip for what I have to say. 
<laughs> All right, Holgan. I'm through with your... Hey, hey, you're that mold tester guy, Mr. Goodman. What... What are you two doing together? Hey, guys, they just put all the stuff out for Make Your Own Sundays. My insurance adjuster, this is ridiculous. You're all in on this scam together, aren't you? All you guys care about is money. Okay, fine. How much to get rid of you? Is that a Cirrus machine? <laughs> yeah, but it'll only let you take out $300 a day. That's just not gonna cut it. Nope, not when you got a deal as sweet as ours. Heck, I could throw a dart at the phone book, and I bet you the house I hit would test positive for mold. <laughs> and the phone book, too. Say, yeehaw! There's gold in them there walls! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for no pest strips for both crawling and flying pests. The motel I'm staying at is a little dreary, so if you have the ones that look, you know, a little festive, that'd be good. Oh, well, hell yeah! Dude, we got ones with snowflakes, we got ones with burrows on them. I mean, they're all pretty beautiful. I'm coming. Good morning, Mr. Holgan. I was wondering if we could have a word. Sure, come on in. I'd love to show you my new flat screen TV. Just got it. So, Mr. Holgan, I thought I'd come over here and ask you one more time politely to please leave my house alone. Sorry, Mr. Hill, but I just ordered a new couch. That big TV just makes this one look so dinky. Well, at least I tried. Hey, Bill, why don't you make yourself comfortable? Thank you, Hank. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, I just got myself certified as a trained mold expert. Took me 30 spin. But you know, the insurance company will never let you test your own house and pass it. Now, that would be a clear conflict of interest. I know. That's why I'm going to test your house. Bill, you ready? Yeah, ready. Ew. Yeah, pretty gross, huh? With the fungus and all. Hey, is fungus a mold? Let's find out. Whoa there, now now, now take it easy, okay? Let, let, let's just talk about this. Hey, you're testing right near his feet. Sorry, I'm new at this. But after I send the results to your insurance company, I'm sure they'll send someone out here and they'll do a more thorough search, punch a few holes in your wall, rip up your floorboards. You know, I heard nine out of ten houses have mold. But who knows, maybe you'll be one of the lucky ones. Okay, okay, what do you want? <laughs> Okay, Mr. Hill, you passed. Your house is officially mold-free. Goodbye. Now hold on. We're not quite done yet. You two owe me a parade. So if you'll just step this way, and I know you will. Come on, Bobby. Let's show them the house that's going to be yours someday. <clears throat> this ranch-style rambler was built by the great-grandson of T. Anderson Kearney. Uh, you might want to put your case down. This is going to take a while. Now, a funny thing about this boot remover... Well, not so much man who fired the first shot at the Battle of Gonzales. Merry Christmas, gentlemen. So, Hank, what's with the black suit? Someone die? <laughs> oh, right. Someone did die. Your uh, mom's best friend, as I recall. Well, this is awkward. Merry Christmas.
That was Lottie Bonner's lawyer. Lottie left me all her lovely antique furniture. I'm so touched. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Uh, so your best bet is, you know, neither. Oh, of course I'll never be able to get it all back to Arizona. Well, heck, Mom, I can move that stuff out to Arizona for you easy. Oh, but... I will be at your door by Christmas Eve. Heck, all I have to do is rent a moving van. Oh, Hank, are you sure a van is big enough? That is a big band. Holy crap! No more, no more inside, that old goodness. I'm gonna name her Wonder Truck. Ask you one question. You can't come with me on the trip. I have a follow-up question. Uh, no, no, come please, on, let it come, let let it come on, on Wonder Truck. Need. The next one who asks to come won't even get to look at it. Okay then. Huh? I know it's more cargo space than I need, but, uh, well, there's a sleeper cab, so I'll save on motels, and, and you know, uh... <clears throat> Hank, you don't have to explain to us. Wow. Look at all this cool stuff! This isn't a toy, Bobby. To a trucker, these are tools. See, truckers are the last cowboys. They're their own bosses, making tough decisions, winning or losing by the calls they make, answering only to the road. Sounds hard. It is. Now, how would you like to make this trip with your old man? Heck yeah! Dad, can I have permission to say hell yeah? Just a moment. It's uh, such a fine night to uh, look at the uh, moon. Look how big and powerful the moon looks in the moonlight. Ready for its trip to Arizona. <laughs> it's just not fair. The moon, I mean. This is a dream come true. A trucker and his boy alone with their rig on the open road. But don't worry, Peggy. We'll do a quick turnaround and be back home by Christmas morning sharp. A trucker and his boy. And they've promised their mom to be home by Christmas. <gasps> Hank. This is one of those novelty Christmas songs that always sells a million freaking copies. I have always wanted to get in on that racket. Okay, let's roll. Well, all right. Okay, Bobby, we got to stay on time, so drink up and let's hit the road. Coffee? For me? Mmm. I don't think I can ever go back to Coco. You see, trucking is like a lot of things in life. Know your rig inside out. Take care of your rig, and she'll take care of you. Dad, you know everything. Well, I do have a Class C license. <laughs> We're stowing away. We're stowing away. <laughs> We're so bad. Ooh, hey, man, look at that. Man, just like, like, like a guy that ain't been hurt, man. Oh, wake up. Boy, look at that view. This is probably how it looked to the very first truckers. Natalie, and why is that? A trucker always protects his cargo. My dearest Nancy, I have many questions about the outside world. Is our government still intact? And what of young Joseph? Gentlemen, to your racers. Oh, no! Hank and Bobby in a Christmas truck. Oh, dang it. They're just no good words that rhyme with truck. Aunt Peggy, could they be delivering uh, a snowman? I bet there's lots of words that rhyme with snowman. Of course. Who needs a snowman more than a widow in Arizona? Our song will be about Hank and Bobby delivering a snowman to a woman with no man. <laughs> I'm a songwriter! The second largest thermometer in the U.S. Do we have time to stop? Well, we have to be home by Christmas so we can stop or we can go to a truck stop and chow down like real truckers. Chow down like 
real truckers. Well, all right then. Eh, you can see the thermometer from here anyway. A hundred and... Hank, for God's sakes, let us out! <laughs> it's so hot! No, Hank hears us, but he's choosing to punish us. Rightly so. What's the use? At the rate I'm smoking, we only have about 30 minutes of oxygen left anyway. Oh, man. Dang old... Dang old... Dang, man. I need the dang old water, man. We brought food. Maybe we can squeeze moisture out of it. Let's see. Chips. Barbecue chips. Vinegar flavor. Hot and spicy. Saltines. No! <laughs> I didn't want to describe it to you because, well, how could I? See, for truckers, time is money. We can't spend time waiting in a line with the civilians. We keep to a schedule. Yep, just rode in from Arlen, Texas on a straight shot. How about you? Well, I guess I'm coming in straight from old eastern Long Island. Guess this would be my first meal in 40 hours or so. Yep, I hear that. Okay. So what are you boys hauling anyway? A sofa for my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you taking up space costs real truckers money. Go on. Huh? But, Dad, I thought you said we were truckers. We are. I don't mean to spoil your fun, sir, but you're not a trucker. You're just a guy with a truck. You think I'm not a trucker? Well, I drove through El Paso in rush hour and didn't grind a gear. Look at my rig, perfectly maintained from the back bumper to the grill. We're not going to drink Bill after all, okay? Waiter, table for five! <laughs> We're sorry, Hank. We'll sit quietly back here if you give us a water dish to drink from. We'll be as quiet as truck mice. Get in the cab. Fixing this hole you made has put me off schedule. So I'll skip my bunk time and drive all night. Now get moving. This is the saga our song will tell. Hank and Bobby find a snowman hitchhiking through Arizona. He will melt to death unless he gets home to the North Pole by Christmas. Hank and Bobby take him home. The snowman snowman dinner. You got it? Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay to take a nap, Dad. If we're half a day late, Grandma won't mind. Well, I will. We've got a promise to your mother to keep. We are getting back home by Christmas morning. Duck. Duck. The goose! What? I'll get him, Hank. I'll get him. You ah. get him, Hank. Ah. Shut it! Hey! And that's how the Christmas snowman got back home! You don't like it. Oh, it's not that, Shugs. It's just that I've got a lot of other things on my mind, like, I don't know where my husband is. Oh, I'm sure Dale is fine. Now, how can we fix the song? We tried your way, Aunt Peggy. Now we should do my way. We have differences, like when Simon versus the Garfunkel. Look how straight the lines on the highway are. It'd be easy to get highway hypnosis. Bill, you are getting sleepy. It's working. I'm so sleepy. Man, 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 make him think like he's that, that dang old chicken, man. Hey, Dad! Uh. Look! Uh. Stop four miles. We can get you some coffee. Bobby, it would take too long to tie him up, so I'm going to need you to get the coffee. Which line? Trucker? Trucker. Dad, they wouldn't let me on the trucker line for moral reasons, but... I guess playing trucker takes a lot out of you. <laughs> at least now he can tell all the other accountants he slept at a real truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get a move out. Now, if we make up for the lost time while my dad's asleep, he'll wake up ahead of schedule. Mr. Boomhauer, are you sure you're able to handle this vehicle? Hey, man, that's a dang old piece of cake, man. Don't you like riding a dang, dang old riding mower and a forklift? You know, just like a dang old lion, same as kitty cat, man. 
14 foot clearance. <laughs> How tall is the truck? You probably don't. I don't know, Bobby. I don't know. It's awfully big. I'd say 30 feet tall at least. Boomer, get off now! This is the wrong way. Turn around. Hey, man, see them dang old size of this thing, man? They won't talk about a little deal turn around, man. It can't do. Oh, there's another exit. Take it. Well, this feels good, doesn't it? Well, Mom, that's the last of it. Hank, this is the best Christmas ever. Ready? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, dawn's early light, dawn's early light. What the? Where? Hank, we're having trouble with the engine and the clutch. Oh, and we're on top of a mountain. I think it might be a rocky mountain. Ah! What the hell happened? Let's just say mistakes were made. Then other larger mistakes. We're not proud of ourselves. I'm sorry, Dad. We thought if we kept driving, we could help you make your delivery on time. We didn't even stop for a potty break. I had to use your coffee mug. Dale, get behind the line of shame and to help. Hank, we're cold. Can we put our hands down? No. Okay, we're out of fuel. That part I can understand. But how did you let the battery go dead? It was dark and the headlights made us feel so safe. Breaker 1033, this is Top Hat. Requesting emergency? No, Bobby. I don't want to bother real truckers with the problems of a guy who fell asleep and let his rig wind up on top of a mountain. What are you doing, Dad? <sighs> I'm going to call AAA and probably hire some movers, too. It's time to let the professionals handle this. No. Sure, we're in a hole. But real truckers are in a hole all the time, and they don't give up. They figure out a way to get through. You're not just a guy with a truck, Dad. Okay, everybody, let's check out our rig and see what we've got. Yeah, yeah! Yeah! yeah. Uh, line suspended. Yay! And a Charlie Chaplin ceramic lamp and these opera glasses. That's what we have to work with. Hank, which would you rather burn for warmth? The dining set or the frames of these tasteful landscape paintings? Neither. I am getting this load to my mom intact. Hey, man, got them dang old antique lamps, man. Talk about no little kerosene left inside, man, you know. They'll probably stay warm dang old five minutes or so, you know. Talk about no dang old... Be some kerosene still left in those lamps to keep us warm if... No, wait a minute. Bobby, hand me those opera glasses. Perfect. Now, if we can get the truck rolling downhill, the motion will recharge the battery. And kerosene is close enough to diesel fuel so we can burn it. I'll pop the clutch and we can turn around in that meadow. I understood something about burning fuel. Are we going to be warm? You two are going to get warm working up a sweat digging out these tires. Here. Bobby, I need your help over here. And Dale, you're, uh, at large. Yes, sir. Stroke. Stroke. Come on. Ah! Now, I won't be able to see from the back to steer, so you fellows will have to guide me. Boomhauer, use the CB. It's going to be a bumpy ride, so hang on. Hank, what keeps the furniture from sliding out the door? Well, all our straps and chains are on the road for traction, so you do, Bill. Good luck. Okay, man, Hank, you got like a little curve coming up on left. Come about 15, 20 degrees. Now, swinging over a little to right now. Okay, now, okay, now. now. Come on straight, hold, hold steady, man. Hold steady, man. I go back to battle right and I cut right. And then good, good job, man. Come back to get a little straight away about 23 yards now. You get a little metal coming up, come back on, and then dangle left, man. Get ready, get ready now. Okay, I know. Cut, man. Cut, 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 
only get one shot, son. Pull. And Uncle Hank for taking him to Arizona Cause he wanted to see his friend the crippled boy Just one more time before he melted The end That's my Christmas check-in song Do you like it? Shook, it's great But right now I'm busy filing a missing persons report Okay? Can you see now, Hank? Ow! Can you? Ow! Uh -oh. How about now? There I am, 1,500 pounds over my weight limit. So I say to the trooper, Weigh me now. <laughs> Kitchen stopped making breakfast half an hour ago. So what can I bring you, boys? Oh, man, I dang old black coffee, man, and a little water, too. Man, man, where, where's the dang old restroom at? Man? Whoa, slow it down, sweetheart. Okay, man, dang, dang old black <sighs> dang old coffee, man, and dang old water. Well, I know that voice. Hey, one of you boys' name, Hank? Uh, we're just gonna have our coffee and go. We don't need any trouble. I bet you don't. You had enough trouble getting down that mountain this morning. Man, we've been listening on CB to you guys coming downhill on 41. Glad y'all ain't dead. What the hell are you boys sitting over there for? Come on over here. Well, all right. Eh, huh, Bobby? Yeah, all right. Getting downhill like that took some doing. What were you gulping on? Reds, Bennies, Apple Wackies? Uh, I don't go in for the fancy flavored coffees. Just regular old Joe. Man, you are old school. Hey, little friend. How about taking a seat and telling me about that run on that hill? Sir, much as I would love to get into it, we better get rolling. We gotta finish our haul and get home by Christmas. Good man, but you won't get far without your true. On the other hand, if I rode ahead of you, you wouldn't need them. And if I get your back, I can handle your rear view for you. You mean like a... a convoy? Damn straight. <laughs> Hank Hill was a trucker and he drove with pride. For a seatbelt buckle had his boy by his side. He had to roll with a promise and a pretty slow. They took a wrong turn while trying to get back. Wound up stranded in a mountain gap. Had a decent... In the breeze and cold. That old Hank Hill convoy's rolling, and the antique load we're hauling. It's destination, mama, down the line. When we was down at the eat 'em up, the boys and me drinking straight black Joe, and the old CB got to picking up something. It sounded downright weird. He said, "Hang on, Hank, man, talking about you, old old tired, talking about me, little old left man, now Hank swing right." Yeah, I tell you, had us truckers pretty dang scared. Then Hank pulled up, feeling none too big. We couldn't believe how he'd handled that rig, so I said, Hell, we'll help you out, my man. I'll call Gravel Gut Ben and One-Eyed Mona. We'll get that load out to Arizona, cause the trucker helps the trucker helps his mama when he can. Goodness, this horn was giving me an awful headache. Is there a propane leak? Oh, God, it's goober smooches, isn't it? I told him that buffet was a death trap. No, top. I come a-calling with good news. The zoning board approved. You mean the new storage yard. Triple the storage capacity. Wow, the new storage yard? I, I can't believe it's finally happening. Just one problem, though. I need you to buy me some art. Uh, 
Sir, I... Zoning board art law got to beautify one part of town if they're gonna let you uglify another. Keeps everything nice and even. But, but I don't know the first thing about art. What? The zoning board can't hang excuses in City Hall, Hank. Now get mine! Hello, Triple A. Hey there. Oh, hey, Hank. What can I do you for? Well, I got kind of a tall order for you, Fred. Uh, I need some help with, uh, buying some art. Let's see. There's the McManerbury Artist Colony. Do they have good art? Couldn't say. But it's one of this month's great drives. Boy, this is a great drive. Do you already know what kind of art you're gonna buy? Because I should let you know now, I'm willing to pose for a statue. Uh, thanks, Bobby. But this art is gonna be put in the median on Travis Boulevard. A lot of people drive by there on their way to the interstate, and I want them to be inspired when they get there. Mm. What kind of... <gasps> Thank God you're here. I haven't been able to send a fax in two days. Uh, no, uh, I'm Hank Hill, Strickland Propane. I need to buy a five or seven feet tall... It doesn't have to be real arty. No nudity, of course. Maybe something with a lion or a bald eagle. Something that says America. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, I've got it. A life-size portrait of George Washington. It's a hologram. From here, George Washington. But from over here, he morphs into Adolf Hitler. <gasps> <sighs> Washington. Hitler. Washington. Hitler. Picture Ronald Reagan. He's squatting over... Ah! I have just the thing. I'm calling it industrial penis number five. Bobby, car. And then it just got worse from there. I don't get it. I just wanted to buy something that people would want to look at. Spruce up that highway median. Isn't that what art's supposed to be? Yeah, man, you know, you're dang, dang old naive, man. Talk about no, you know, like about dang old Dada, you know, like a little toilet in a museum, man. You don't talk about no dang old ideas, man. <laughs> I never could understand a word of that art mumbo jumbo. You know what I never understood? Why a pretty girl would model naked and let someone paint her. And, you know, if she'd do that for just anyone or. Oh. What the? Don Quixote's authentic Spanish cuisine and karaoke went out of business, and guess what I bought from them? A suit of armor! Is it real? I was hoping you'd ask me that. Gentlemen, nine irons. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I'm invincible. Come on, Hank, take a whack. Well, as much as I'd like to hit you with the golf club, I can't do it right now. I've got to come up with some art. Don't be afraid of the groin, boys. I don't think those artists ever shower. It was like, just when you thought you'd never smelled anyone worse than one guy, bam! The next guy smells even worse. <sighs> it was awful, Peggy. Makes me wish there was some way to buy art without the, you know, artists and whatnot. Maybe I can help you find something. I've always had an artistic bent, and I have decorated every birthday cake in this family for 20 years. Yeah, I remember the cake you made for Bobby's fourth birthday, the one that looked like a train. Chocolate chip cookie wheels. Well, heck, Peggy, why don't you just make the art? It can't be very hard. I mean, even the people who do it for a living don't seem very good at it. Well, Hank, only if I can think of an idea. Now let me think. Propane. America. The future. I've got it. A probot, Hank. A robot made entirely of propane tanks. Welcoming the people of Arlen to the future. A future of Arlen pride and hard work and clean burning barbecue and... Stop, Peggy. Can you do it for under $800? Buddy, you want to stop that? No, I don't, you armorless jackass. And there's nothing you can do about it. Dale, maybe we should get down. Oh, I...
You know, I never thought anything could put this crazy propane game in perspective, but you did it. So what do you think, sir? It don't matter what I think. Could be a statue of two dogs a-humping, as long as the zoning board thinks it's art. At what? Let's speak of the devil. <laughs> Margo, you look just radiant. Hmm, interesting. What does everyone think? Hmm. Real interesting. Hmm. And who is the artist? Voila, Peggy Hill. Peggy Hill? Wait, aren't you my daughter's substitute Spanish teacher? Ah, so you can see the Spanish influence in my work. Is this some kind of joke? What? Uh, You're a substitute teacher, not a real artist. This is crap. 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 Yeah, crap. Complete crap. crap. I don't appreciate you wasting my time, Buck. Permit denied. Yeah, but I want some art, Hank. I don't care if you have to rob a museum to get it. Oh, I, I can do this, Buck. Just give me another chance. Oh, what about your, your idea about the two dogs? Sorry, Peggy, you had your bite at the apple. Wait, Buck, Buck, Buck. Oh. Well, there goes our ride. Stupid Da Vinci with his stupid classical training. Margot would probably marry him. Well, did the zoning board reconsider? <sighs> Not exactly. Buck's setting up a meeting with some art dealer from Dallas. A guy named Jazz. Ugh. So that's it? Just because I didn't go to some snooty art school, I can't make art? Hey, you're preaching to the choir. I always liked the probot. You look at the probot, he looks at you, you think, hey, things are gonna be okay. Sure, Peggy can make a metal man, but I'm living it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Sweet revenge. Sweet revenge who? Get out of here. Not so fast, Mr. King of Eighth Grade. Gribble? Looks like you didn't count on me coming back in a suit of armor when you were throwing my lunch on the roof. Ha! We're gonna settle the score right now. Uh. Cut it out. Uh. Hey, you and your flesh skin can't hurt me, can he, Bill? No! Uh, maybe we can talk about this? Forget it, Bill. There's no reasoning with this animal. This big, fat animal. This big, hairy, fat. <laughs> Where is the... It's supposed to be a turnoff. Whoa. Yeah, it's Jazz. Can you tell my one o'clock I'm gonna be late? I just ran into something amazing over here. If I am not an artist, what is that? Mm. Oh, it's crooked! <gasps> are you Peggy Hill? The Peggy Hill who created this? And who are you? Jazz Colton, art dealer. Now tell me everything. You didn't go to art school, did you? Didn't need it. I am completely self- Well, I was born in a small town in Montana. I moved to Arlen in high school. That's when I met Hank. We married two years later. I've heard enough. Oh, I'm so sorry. This must be so boring for you. Boring? Ha! Huh. It's treasure. Peggy, I want to buy anything you can make. I want to sell your art. You do? Everyone is going to want a Peggy Hill. <laughs> So, uh, that's it, huh? Just the silverfish? You don't have anything for me to exterminate that's got a little more fight to it? Don't think so. Come on! Mountain lion? Bear? Old Rottweiler you don't need anymore? Sorry. What about that old bag of a wife of yours? <gasps> Hello? Jazz. So, how's my best-selling artist? What? No. Your stuff has been flying out of the gallery. Your latest, the Prinker, brilliant. That's why I've got a wonderful honor in store for you, Peggy. A gallery show just for you and one other special local artist. This is going to be your coming out party, the night that introduces you to the art world. How does... Didn't believe in me and really rub their noses in it. It wouldn't be an art show without it, Peggy. See you there. Hello, Margo. Uh-huh, Peggy Hill here. Yeah, the Peggy Hill you said wasn't an artist? Listen, I just wanted to let you know that she is having a special gallery show in Dallas. Mm-hmm, that's right. And I can get you in because you are lucky enough to know the artist. My 
God, art is fulfilling. Well, I don't know a lot about artists, but you sure are the prettiest one I've ever seen. Peggy! Margo, you came. I'm impressed, Peggy. But between us girls, I had a feeling your stuff was good. Why didn't I trust myself? Ah, water under the bridge. Care to enter with the artist? Bobby? This would just look perfect in the yeah, You're right. Yeah. It's amazing. She's a genius. I find the only real art comes from people who have no self-awareness. The outsiders who hover on the fringes of society. There's our guest of honor. What an evening, friends. What a special evening for art. You don't discover a Peggy Hill every day. It's a rare privilege. But then it happens. You find someone the art world has ignored. Here is someone who, despite having no formal education, has been able to touch us. Her mind lacks the fine tools of the academy, but she hacks and bludgeons with the blunt instruments of her unspoiled, childlike spirit. Since that day, she came down from the mountains and became the child bride of a simple laborer. She has been looking for a way to express her anger at the world passing her by. She is angry. She is practically illiterate. But like a wounded animal crying out, she makes herself heard. Bless you, Peggy, for letting us hear you. Amazing. What? I ain't got no learning? Oh, God, Hank. Of course, we are here to honor another exciting new voice of outsider art, the only artist I've worked with who can be called Peggy Hill's peer, Jimmy Wichard. Hey, Peggy! Now it all makes sense. Peggy, you are an inspiration to inbred morons everywhere. I love your work. I was wondering, do you feel sad sometimes, like your heart has a tummy ache? Oh, Hank, let's get out of here. I'll get Bobby. Oh, well, we can have that ship right to you, you know? Pronto. Jazz, how could you? I ain't got no learning. <laughs> you did say you didn't have any formal training, Montana high school sweetheart. Look, I just spiced everything up a little. Oh, God. So people weren't buying ProBots because they like them? They were buying them because they thought I was some kind of inbred hillbilly? Of course. <laughs> Let's face it. Middle-class housefrau stacks a bunch of propane tanks. Even I'm falling asleep. But say it's made by someone straight out of deliverance and ka -ching. Jazz! <sighs> oh, hey, oh. hey, you make guys too? I make guys. Don't copy my guys! Now you gotta shake it! The art don't work if you don't shake it! Huh? Huh? And how's the robot game treating you? So, uh, you know, I bet a lot of artists had people thinking they were all kinds of stuff before they got famous. Did you see all? Though the board understands you overcame a lot in your life, Angry Hillbilly is not the face of Arlen we want to show the world. Please remove your metal debris promptly, and look at the size of this typeface! That's, uh, pretty big. It was a great show, Jimmy. You're gonna be a rich artist. Hey, what happened to the stuff I made? Your art, Jimmy? We sold it. You sold the stuff I made? I want back! Give it! No, remember, we sell it, I give you money. I can't make new stuff out of money! Give me cans! I want cans! The good ones! You know, the, the smash ums so, you don't want money, you want cans. Duh! You're the boss, Jimmy. I'm the boss. <laughs> Stay angry, Jimmy! Oh, hey, Mr. Hell. Don't give me that. You made a laughing stock out of my wife. And you want what? I want you to sell some of her art for real, without all the lies. I sympathize with you, honest engine, but it isn't gonna happen. Says who? It's good art, I tell you what. And they liked it before, they'll like it now. Look. I can see the inbred hillbilly thing is really bothering you, so I'll make you a deal. I'll say she's insane, but it's gotta be criminally insane or we've got nothing. No, that's it, mister. You just sold your last crowbar. How about syphilitic? What, hook hands? Uh. 
Dale, you did that on purpose. Men, I'm taking your roses. Love, come on, Bon. Come on, Jungle Love. Soft shells, cower before me. It ends now, Dale. You can't kick Rainy Street around anymore. Oh, sweet, sweet, stupid Bill. Bill, roll me over so I can kick your ass. Actually, just move your ass closer. Lynn? I believe this is yours. Hey! Hank, how could you bring that thing here? I didn't want to see it torn down. I thought, I don't know, we could put it up maybe in the yard somewhere. I want it dead, Hank. I can't stand it laughing at me, telling me he's not art. Just a bunch of stupid tanks. Why don't you sleep on that, Peggy? Besides, I don't have the right tools here, and I just... I want it dead now, Hank. I need those tools. <clears throat> Where are the tools? Strickland. No, Hank. Let me do it. That's right, Metalhead. This is personal. All right, you're making another one. Hey, honey, they're building another probot. So, you like it? Yeah. Every time I drove by it, it made me feel... Optimistic. Well, that's what I was going for. Hey, we're not exactly the art types, but do you think you could make us a little probot for our lawn? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. You make them the order? You think you could do one holding a pool cue for my rumpus room? Well, sure. How about holding an American flag? Yeah, well, hold on, hold on. I need to write it all down. Yeah, uh, one at a time, please. You know, so the artist can hear you. That'd be great, Salute. Hitler, Washington, Hitler. You're old enough to be on your own, Bobby. Pretty soon the babysitters are going to be younger than you. But, but... Oh, you'll be fine. I've gotten rid of that hat rack you said looked like the devil. Hey, Frankenstein, monster. In this day and age, I'm telling you, kids... Chuck Storm on Channel 5 predicts possible moderate breeze for the camping trip. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, I don't know how you girls get along without us every year. <laughs> you know, the French onion soup and the minestrone soup sound so good, I think I'm going to order both. Two soups? Yes, in place of an entree. Hello? Dad? I crawled into your bed to calm me down, but it just wasn't the same without you guys here. Bobby, everything would have been fine if you hadn't panicked. The problem is you lack confidence. Give me confidence! Well, I can't give it to you. You have to earn it. Hey, you know, one of the best ways to do that is to rely on yourself in the wild. Just you against the elements. 
I don't know. I don't want you to get married and have to have your wife tuck you in at night. You're coming on our camping trip. Fine, but I don't know what I can learn in the wild that I can't learn watching Zoobly Zoo. And I figure if we make this an eat-only-what-you-catch trip, Bobby will be forced to learn some self-reliance. That's a with two rocks, you feel invincible. Yeah, man, just like my dang old Ted Nugent said, man, you know, ain't can't no grill unless you kill it, man. Like dang, I'm talking about on old... Yeah, I use my survival training every day. Yep, being alone in the woods prepared me for being alone, well, everywhere else. Oh, I'm gonna miss Dale, Shug. And I will miss my boys. But you know, I see this as the perfect opportunity to take care of this things-to-do list that's been hanging over my head. See boys off? Done. The park department is not responsible for my safety. <gasps> oh, God. That's right. You're responsible now. Oh, already that time of year again, huh, Hank? Yeah, looks like it. How are you, Ranger Bradley? <laughs> Working so hard I couldn't tell you. What'll it be, the usual? Yep, old lot number 6347. We watched that possum family grow up right before our eyes. So how does it feel to be setting up your own camp for the first time? I brush my teeth with bug cream and I'm still kind of woozy. Can we go home? No, we've got work to do. Come here, fish. I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Idiot. That's three for Dale, three for me, four for Boomhauer. And nada for Bobby. And since it's an eat-only-what-you-catch trip tonight, you will be dining on filet of zero. <sighs> Shut up, Dale. Maybe he's right. I can't do this. Sure you can, Bobby. Just remember, to catch a fish, you have to think like a fish. Hmm, I'm wet, and I don't even know it. <sighs> no, where would you be feeding? Probably in that algae-covered area over there. That algae does look pretty good. Nancy, in one day, I have accomplished everything I set out to do. Do you think it would be gilding the lily to refinance the house while Hank's away? Uh-oh, someone's beeping in. Hold on. Hello, Peggy. This is Dora Shelwin from Tom Landry. I teach... Are you retiring? Uh, no. Actually, I just needed the number of your veterinarian. I have a quick question. Go ahead. I meant for the vet. You see, I bought this minor bird and it just won't talk. Put the bird on the line. What? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Okay, bird. Ah! I love Dora Shelwin! Who's a good bird? I love Dora... I got all day. Uh... I love Dora Shelwin. Hey, bro. What? Oh, hi. If you catch anything, we should use this as a plate. I haven't even seen a fish all day, and I'm starving. I got a hamburger bun top. Still has most of its sesame seeds. Bobby, don't take that. It's okay. We can split it threesies. Thank you for the, uh, bun, but we are only eating what we catch this weekend. I'm trying to teach my son self-reliance. No, I'm trying to teach him self-reliance. What? Yeah, the thing about self-reliance is, it's, like, bad. Hugs for smokes! Look, I... Oh, God. Another one? Okay, I don't know what's going on, but you're gonna have to tell your friends to get out of here. All of them? What are they, Dad? <sighs> They're hippies, son. I love you! Hey, man, I thought like that old Reagan got rid of all them in the 80s, man. Talking about no yippee to yuppie, man. This land is our land! Welcome home, friend. Ah, Bobby, back in the tent. Go away and put on some clothes. Hey, this isn't Kinko's, man. It's the gathering. The what? The gathering, bro. Everyone's here. Crunchies and hempies, earth mothers, vegans, hyper-vegans. We're all here. Thousands of us. Apple seed! This may be the saddest day of my career. 
Ranger, how could you have given all these people park permits? What were you thinking? Sorry, Hank, we were blindsided. They got a bunch of ACLU lawyers to sue, saying the First Amendment allows them to peaceably assemble without a permit. Ugh, don't tell me that's covered by the First Amendment. Public defecation is protected as long as they say it's a political or artistic statement. And they do. Nothing again. We'll never catch anything. Fish hate loud hippie drums, and so do I. Hey, hey yo! Beautiful drifting gypsy man Collecting empty soda can Just travel on a manta ray That music! It's beautiful. Dang it, if I have to pull one more hook out of Bill... Excuse me, sir, but I could not help noticing you're making your salad wrong. Where are the beets? Where are the red beans? I don't know. You know what? Yeah, we're just going to have to start all over. I made a salad last night that people are still talking about. I mean, look at us. We're talking about it. Firewood! Log nappers! I'm starving, Dad. Can't you teach me self-reliance at a restaurant? I'll order off the adult menu. Now calm down. I found some perfectly good thorn apples and sour berries in the forest. You go find us some sticks and we can roast them like s'mores. And do not talk to any hippies. My name's Fudgy, and that's Topaz. We met on a turnip farm. Oh. What you got in the kettle? Jumbo gumbo. How much does it cost for a bowl? Everything here is free. People here share with one another. You give what you can, and you get what you need. I don't know if I should. My dad said I can only eat what I catch. Then catch. Oh. So you're sure this is okay? My dad wants me to be self-reliant. In a hundred years, who's going to care if you were self-reliant or not? <sighs> you make a good point, Fudgy. No, thank you. I'll probably catch a deer tomorrow, and I want to make sure I'm hungry. Good for you, Bobby. You're really hanging in there. You know what? If you can wait, I can wait. Goodbye, gentlemen, and good riddance. I'm one chorus of trucking away from snapping. Yeah, man, I, I like that dang, dang old mandolin, man. It never sounds so bad. Like I got a dang old Bill Monroe spinning his dang old grave, man. What? You guys can't get up and leave now. What kind of lesson is that for Bobby? A good one. He can learn from our bad example. Well, I guess self-reliance isn't for everyone, Dad. <laughs> stellar gumbo, Fudgy. Just stellar. This time... Don't skimp on the potatoes. Dig deep. Sorry, but the gumbo's gone, Bo. My campsite anyway. Hold on, little guy. The pot's empty. It's time for you to share up. Uh, uh, I don't have anything, but in a hundred years, who's gonna care, right? Budgie's hungry now. And then I'm gonna share your cooler. Hey, do you think your dad's got any money we could share? Hey, I can trade these for a burrito. Wait! Those are my dad's fishing poles! You can't take those! We only want to share, guy. You didn't mind sharing our gumbo, did you? No. So we're sharing back. It's the law of karma. Promise that you'll bring them back before my dad gets here. So we're agreed, right? You'll bring them back? Yeah, man, sure. Still no sign of Bill. Probably got his head stuck in something. But I'm sure he'll turn up once we start cooking those fish we're about to catch. Actually, I'm in the mood for more thorn berries, or maybe a pine coat. What the? Bobby, the fishing rods are gone. You were supposed to be watching this stuff. I, uh, I'm sure whoever took them will bring them right back. <sighs> Thieves don't return stolen items. It's just a thing, Dad. They didn't steal something important, like a smile, right? You talk in the world isn't gonna get our stuff back. We have to actually do something about it. Yeah. 
Excuse me, I'm looking for a couple of fishing rods, dual paddle crank handles, 12-pound lines. Mm. Never mind. I'm really sorry to hear about your fishing poles, man. Uh, okay. If anyone can help you, it's the council circle. There's some real wise bastards there. Uh, thanks. Hey, can you give me some money? No. Fascist. It's only with teamwork that we can find Appleseed's missing teeth. Uh, pardon me. Hank Hill, assistant manager, Strickland Propane. Shut up! What what gives you the right? The rules say you can't speak unless you got the feather. Oh, Bill. Hey, Hank. My new name is Energy Turtle. I've found myself. Bill, fun's over. Wash that mud off now and help me find my fishing rods. No, Hank. Now I bet you search for them everywhere. Except your heart. Get out of the circle! He's serious. No being may speak without the feather. Okay, where are my fishing rods? Hey, why'd you come to a gathering if you didn't want to see? Hey. Yeah? Well, I'll come to you and gather your, f- your face! All right, negative vibes. Negative vibes. The circle will resume discussion after a round of jumping jacks. Oh, God, don't ruin jumping jacks. Looks like we're going to have to drive into town to get new poles. Bobby, my truck is gone. What happened? Whoa, a talking bear. Uh, My sleeping bag. Your nudity. Calm down. You can join us. Yeah. You can hold the yanni. Bobby, what is going on here? Dad. I ate hippie gumbo! What? No! I know I was supposed to be self-reliant, but I was hungry, and I didn't think I'd ever catch anything, and they said since they shared with me, I had to share our stuff with them, and then they shared our stuff all over the place, and I'm sorry! My name's Fudgy. Oh, Divine Son. Oh, Divine Son. We observe your holy wisdom. We We observe your... Son is God. Yes. Wow. The security camera shows that your truck hasn't left the park. We'll monitor the exit at all times to make sure it doesn't. (sighs) What's your advice here? Just sit tight. This park covers 1,000 square miles, and it's mushroom season. Your truck could be anywhere. Dad, I'm sorry I ruined the trip. It was all my fault. Yes, yes it was. But, uh, you just took responsibility and admitted it. That's the first step towards self-reliance. What are you doing? I'm calling your mom to come pick us up. I guess I'll have to come back later and pack out my truck. You mean we're just giving up? The hippies have us surrounded, Bobby. There's nothing we can do. But, Dad, if we just give up, the hippies might keep coming back forever. They are like locusts, but I don't know what the heck we can do about it. I guess we'll just camp somewhere else next year. Well, maybe it's like what you said. If you want to catch a fish, you have to think like a fish. We just have to think like hippies. That is impossible. Come on, Dad, just try. Okay, I'm a hippie. I'm naked because I smoked all my clothes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I don't like to work. Right. I like everything handed to me. A kid who can't take care of himself. Figures this is the one place they're not burning incense. Stay in school, son. You know, Ranger Bradley, the First Amendment guarantees the hippies the right to be here. But as Bobby was pointing out, does it guarantee them the right to these park services? Yeah, the ranger station shouldn't have to deal with this. You're telling me, did you know that hippies are the number one source of airborne and riverborne pollution right in front of Dow Chemical and Mexican trucks? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but uh, these hippies have got to go. What would you say to Bobby and me taking care of them ourselves? Great! How many fire hoses do you need? I've got some pepper spray that could take down a bear. Uh, uh uh-huh. Or maybe we could just cut off some of the park services. Well, that doesn't sound quite as interesting, but you're on your own. Okay, what do we got? But I'm on a roll! 
I want to give strokes and warm fuzzies to Bubble Man for creating limitless bartering periods. Bobby, grab the feather for me. But I wasn't finished with my heart song. Attention, people. Minutes ago, I spoke with the ranger, and dude, I'll be cut off effective immediately. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. This means the porta potties are no longer available. We have a right to those potties. Yes, yes we do. Yeah. Yeah. Clean water will no longer be provided to you, and as of this moment, the park's snack bar is closed. No. Oh. Snacks? What? Hey, uh, is it just me, or am I picking up some negative vibes out there? Well, here's a positive vibe for you. You don't need the park to provide services for you because we're going to show you how, with a little hard work, you can take care of yourselves. Grab the feather. Yeah, this will be great. We'll teach you how to dig your own latrines, maintain your own roads, purify your own water, and catch your own fish. So what do you say? Who here is ready to work? What a drag. Yeah. Rumsfeld. So long now. Jack, Bobby, I came to say goodbye and wish you much love. Where are you going? Dallas. The fish is playing a musical concert there. We're all going to live in the parking lot. See ya. Will we ever see Mr. Dotrave again? Around the 15th. That's when he has to report back to work or he's AWOL. Go to hell. Good riddance. Okay, you drive, I'll push. On three, punch the gas. I'm on it. One, two, three. Hit it. Okay, what do you say there, son? Ready to go home? Not yet, Dad. We still got to pick up dinner. Here comes the mail. I wonder if I got anything. I'm not gonna get anything. I sure hope my new driver's license finally shows up. I hear the new security holograms are outstanding. Maybe that's what's holding things up. I'll tell you why your license is taking so long. The US Postal Service is bogged down in the most elaborate PSYOPs campaign in history. First, they fatten us up with all those two-for-one pizza coupons. Then when we're too logy to put up a fight, they sell us off to the Red Cross, who removes our kidneys, which go back on the pizzas to start the process all over again. Did you mean for all those words to come out together, or did they just fall out randomly? Oh, Hank, you're just a mouse caught in the government's habit trail. Ring the bell and get your cheese, man. Howdy, Hank. You got something from the Department of Public Safety. My driver's license. We were just talking about that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't forget you, Mr. Gribble. How did you know my name? Go to hell. Bah! <laughs> Hank R. Hill. Eyes brown. Yes, sir. Weight 220 and dang proud of it. Sex... F? That's female. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine, Dad, a woman? Now, where did I put my pantyhose? Bobby, living room. Look at that, Peggy, right over the Texas State Seal. It's not that big of a deal, honey. Just ignore it. Nobody even checks IDs anymore. But what if I died in some car accident and because of my license, they put me in the ladies' morgue? You can bet that'd wind up on the news. Are you going to wear that, Hank? 
because I have a little purse that would look so good with... <laughs> Peggy, oh. living room. Sorry. <laughs> ah. 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 I just had the worst dream. Oh, uh, how about I read you a story, just like I used to before you got a mustache and became so frightening. Here we go, the greatest fairy tale ever told. It's got everything. The Prince of Camelot, rubies, and magic bullets. <clears throat> the gloomy overcast sky had given way to bright sunshine as Air Force One touched down in Dallas. Lee Sheen and was preparing to eat a chicken lunch. The president's motorcade proceeded through downtown Dallas towards Dealey Plaza. Why is it called Dealey Plaza anyway? Hmm, excellent question, Joseph. Uh, doesn't really say here. We could see appendix, but that's what's been keeping the kitchen table from wobbling all these years. But Dad, now I'll never be able to sleep. <sighs> How can I say no to those beady little brown eyes? Wow, look at it all. Charts and footnotes and maps. Ooh, here's a cool diagram of Dealey Plaza. So the motorcade was going west on... Wait, I thought they were headed east. But, huh. This is east. Wait, I'm all messed up here. Where's the grassy knoll? Ah, uh, this isn't right. I always thought west was this way. The motorcade turned and went out at the b west. <sighs> okay. So, heading west, the grassy knoll is in front of Kennedy. The book depository is behind him. But that makes sense. It can't make sense. It's the Warren Commission report, for God's sake. Right. So, where's that new license, Mrs. Hill? Or should I say, Miss Hill? <laughs> can't go wrong with me, is Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why everybody thinks me being mistaken for a lady is funny. It's not. Is that funny? Nope. Nancy says that Dale's really upset about this Kennedy thing. We should probably talk to him. At least get him to put on some pants. Dale? Hey, guys. How you doing, buddy? I finally stopped crying, only because I started vomiting. I know that assassination meant a lot to you, Dale. I'm sorry, uh... My worldview, <laughs> it's gone. I mean, if they were right about Kennedy, maybe we really did go to the moon. Oh, man, how can you damn not know, man? It'd be something everybody know the dang old West, man. I didn't have a compass when I was reading the freaking book, Boomhauer. Which direction are you facing right now, huh? Not so easy, is it, Magellan? You've got other conspiracies, Dale. You got, uh, uh... Aliens! That's right, you got aliens. Why don't you tell us about how the aliens are... are gonna do things? Don't you pat-figure this thing out. Maybe if you show Dale your lady license, it would cheer him up. Uh, I just got my driver's license in the mail, and it says I'm a female. And how can I help you? Uh, well, I'm clearly not one. Then why did you mark F on your application? I didn't. Now, if you could just change it for me, please. We just don't change driver's licenses anymore. Oh, I'll admit, in the old days, we used to take pictures of donkeys or anything for a laugh. But all that changed once the DPS became a division of the Office of Homeland Security. Look, someone pressed the wrong button on their computer. Can't you just fix it? I brought my birth certificate. I'm not the post office. You need to send this to the Austin branch, registered mail, and bingo, they'll square it away in four to six weeks. Now, if you'll just step aside, ma'am. Ma'am? I can't get sued if I call you what's on the license. <laughs> Okay, stay calm. I'm in Dealey Plaza. It's 1963. I am President Kennedy, and I'm not going this way. I'm going this way. Texas School Book Depository, sixth floor. It just makes absolute, total, complete, perfect sense. Kennedy was not killed by a lone gunman. 
Tell me, brother. Let me believe. Kennedy wasn't killed at all. He dropped out of a false bottom in the limo and is now an easy listening DJ in northern Michigan. Kennedy didn't get shot in 63. He slipped down to Mexico, where he got in on the ground floor of the Polo Loco franchise. Uh, 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 I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I thought I knew, but it turns out I didn't. Excuse me, sir. You okay? Okay. Let's get you a hot meal and get you taken care of. But you'd do that for me? Just doing my job, sir. The DPS said they couldn't do it because of national security. What does the contents of my underpants have to do with national security? Dale? Greetings, my fellow Americans. Uh, you know, you got the flags flying right side up there, Dale. Yep. Hey, did you guys know that there's a star for each state? Brilliant! You're a grand old flag, you're a something something flag. You're the emblem blah, the one blah blah. <laughs> So, now you love the government? Give me liberty or give me death, but only the kind of liberty you find in a controlled, well-regulated society. Uh, we are talking about the U.S. government, right? Not another one you made up with your buddies from the gun club? I figure if the government was right about Kennedy, they must be right about everything. Look at this. Government warning. Cigarettes cause cancer. Only a true friend tells you the stuff you don't want to hear. Well, I could have told you that, Dale. But you didn't, did you? Shame on you, Hank. The government has always been there for me, and now it's time for me to be there for it. Hey, who wants to go down to the U.S. Post Office and tell them what a good job they're doing? Well, why don't we go down there and find out what happened to my birth certificate? I sent it registered mail, and the Department of Public Safety still hasn't gotten it, and the post office doesn't know where it is. You should be happy you live in a country that even has a post office. Show some gratitude. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA You really were a woman? That would make you and Mom lesbians. That's it. The cable's gone. He's right, Hank. We wouldn't even be married. We'd be domestic partners. We overcame years of scrutiny in a small but meaningful ceremony. <laughs> what? You want documentation of my gender? I don't get it. Isn't the Adam's apple I've been yelling at you with proof enough? No. I'll need your doctor to sign this form confirming you are the gender you claim to be. Uh, this DPS is really amazing. I didn't know it was possible to feel ignored and violated at the same time. Now get on your goddamn computer and change my license. Are you making a threat to a public safety employee? What? No, I'm, I'm not making a threat. Okay then. Sha, sha, sha. Sha, sha. I'm so jacked up on America. Any of you boys mind if I recite the Constitution? Sure. Yeah, no. Go ahead on, man. We the people, in order to form. Come on, Dale. I've had a long day. Courtesy of the U.S. of A. I love this country as much as the next guy. Not if the next guy's me. Look, if the government is so perfect, why did they send me a license that says I'm a woman, huh? Because you're a woman. Common? Not just your ideal of what a perfect woman would be? Dale, if you actually believe that I'm a woman, then you're crazier now than you've ever been. Crazy? You tell me what's crazier. That the government's free cheese contains surveillance devices to monitor America's underclass, as I once believed, or that you're a woman, as I now believe. If my country says you're a woman, I say, Enchante, madame. Mmm. Whoa. I think you've had enough to drink, sweetheart. Thanks for seeing me, doctor. My regular physician couldn't squeeze me in. I got this form from the DPS. I just need you to say that I'm a man. Whoa, I'm not signing a paper that just says anything. Those days went out with house calls. But I'm clearly a man. Look, I am willing to do a blood test and a genetic screening. That is proof positive and not actionable. <sighs> Can't you just do a, you know, Visual exam? Gender is not as cut and dried as it used to be, Mr. Hill. 
Even if you have male organs, there's transsexual hormone therapy, plastic surgery. Can't you tell the difference between the ones made by God and the ones jerry-rigged out of a toe and some old skin? Legally, no. These back issues of Rosie are just fabulous. They said it would take two to three weeks to get back my results. You know, to prove... No, my hairstylist was telling me that I am a lipstick lesbian. Apparently, that's the best kind. You are quite lucky. <sighs> Bobby, get off the roof. If you're up there with that cape again, so help me... <laughs> Look, I thought with old glory over your head, you might feel a little more pride in being an American. Oh, my shingles. Get down here right now. Yeah, I bet it looks pretty damn majestic from down there. Now, I could only fit 34 stars, so pretend it's 1861, if you would. I'm not messing around. I have proven I could kick your ass while standing on a ladder. <laughs> Hank, I didn't see you as a flag hater. I'm not. You painted my entire gut dang roof. With the symbol of our amazing government. Yeah, well, I don't want to talk about the government right now. I am so goddamn tired of all the bureaucracy and red tape. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I hear what you're saying. Uh, I got some paint remover at the house. I'll just... Ah! Office of Homeland Security? Wow. Is this Tom Ridge? Oh. Hello, Jeff. I would like to report an anti-American. My neighbor is making inflammatory remarks about the government, and he is defacing an American, altering his identity. Hank Hill. 123 Rainy Street. Let's say an Apache helicopter were to land over here. Would there be room for its gun turrets to be pointed at, say, Hank's house? You cannot speak until my roof is spotless. Whoa, a black suburban. The new models are much smaller and greener than last year's. Morning, gentlemen. Looking for a Hank Hill? Resisting arrest! Why don't we uh, head inside? You think I'm a threat to America? That was a call we received, sir. Look, I've had some trouble with my driver's license, but I love this country. It's illegal for us to profile anyone, but I know what I'm looking for. Not that I'm looking for anything in particular, but you're not it. Well, yeah, but who made you think I was? I can't say. Maybe nobody. Maybe somebody. Like I said, I can't say. Probably not him. <laughs> <laughs> no more, Dale. I've put up with some giblet-headed things out of you in the past, but calling the FBI on me, that's final. Why don't you both have a nice cold beer? Beer always calms everybody down. I'm sorry, but after the stunt you just pulled, we are no longer having lady friends anyway. <laughs> so, he wormed his way out of the usually firm grasp of the FBI, did he? Yep. Looks like I'll have to bring in old Hank myself. Soon the bald eagle will be on him like white on rice. Or brown. Or yellow. Because our country is a melting pot. Yep. I just have to bide my time and wait for the right moment. Mail call. I have something here for Mrs. Hill. Huh. I wonder which one of you this is for. I'm getting tired of that joke. Seriously. It's addressed to Mrs. Hill, but it's from the Texas Propane Gas Association. The TPGA? Oh, God, I've been nominated for Texas Propane Woman of the Year. That tears it. They've pushed me too far. I'm going down to that DPS, and I'm getting my license fixed once and for all. I don't care if I have to climb over that counter and do it myself. This is what I've been biting for. An outburst in a government institution. Octavio, Plan F. Arlen DPS. What are you doing, Shug? I'm sending the police to respond to a disturbance at the DPS, and everyone will see Hank Hill for what he truly is. An America-hating he-she. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, Shug. It's at the Academy. Do not get emotionally involved. What Academy? Anyway, even if I wanted to stop Hank, which I don't, it's too late. The wheels are in spin. You could go down there and help him. Why should I do that? He's a threat to the government. The one that makes sure my air is clean and that my food has only an acceptable amount of rat feces in it. He's your best friend. Ugh. Don't you see? I've been undermining the U.S. government for 40 years. This will help repay my debt. All I know, Shug, is that back when you were crazy and thought the government was evil, 
Who looked out for you? Next. All right, here it is. I have tried to be patient with you, but I've had enough. My name is Hank Hill, and I am a man. You are going to change my license to reflect that, or else. Is that a threat? <sighs> if it has to be. Excuse me! What now, Dale? I am Dale Gribble, American citizen, and I demand that you help my disturbed friend here. I'm sorry, sir, but the state requires... Listen! That... I've never been able to say this in my whole life, but as of 2 p.m. yesterday, I am a taxpayer, and I demand $36 worth of service. Sir, if you... I know the chain of command, starting with your supervisor, Franklin Thomas, all the way up to the underintendant of... Ellie played Ladybug soccer with the daughters of the President of the United States. And I'm not afraid to make some phone calls. I'm your worst nightmare. I have a three-line phone and nothing at all to do with my time. Uh, here's your interim driver's license, Mr. Hill. Please confirm the information is correct and sign on the line. You really helped me out back there, Dale. I appreciate it. No problem, friend. But I have to ask you a tough question. Hank Hill, are you a man? Yes, Dale, I'm a man. Okay. I'm willing to take that on faith. Here's what still puzzles me, though. If you are a man, then the government is wrong. Uh-huh. But if the government is right, and you really are a woman, they shouldn't have caved so easily. That shows lack of conviction. Yeah, that's a tough one, all right. Huh. I got some thinking to do. Put my pantyhose. wrong with this machine? Step back and I'll hit it for you. Oh, baby girl, there ain't nothing wrong with the machine. It says you ain't got no more in there. It barely looked. I know. I'll get another cash advance on my credit card. Good idea. If I'd never gotten an advance on the 8-inch TV, never would have slipped in PP, never would have got my settlement money. Scary to think about the road not traveled, huh? Excuse me, Uncle Hank. Can you please loan me $257? No. I need it for my car loan, which you co-signed in the first place. You're saying that like it's my fault. Well... Luann, I don't understand. You're working full-time at the barbershop. Where is the money going? I don't know. Thanks. Let me see your credit card statement. Oh, my God, you've been taking cash advances? Luann, the interest they charge is so high, you can never crawl out from under it. You keep spending like this, and someday you'll be a poor, hungry old woman who can't afford a retirement home. Then where will you be? I don't want to think about it. The street. Help! <sighs> okay, let's see where we can start saving you some money. $180 on a dress? Well, this is easy. From now on, you'll be buying your clothes at the dress barrel. Oh! Please, Hank, you are out of your element. We are talking about how to manage the expenses of a young, stylish woman. But I'm the co-signer on that loan of hers. I will take care of it, Hank. Luann scares easily. That plays into my strengths. Luann, this pie chart represents your expenses. Food, gas, clothes. And this... Gr I'll never be able to eat it! That is why you are going to get a second job. Here are the help-wanted ads. Now go to it. 
I expect to see jobs circled and numbers written down. Oh, and if you come across any ironic deaths in the obits, clip them. You know, piano tuner hit by falling piano, things like that. What are you doing? I need to get another job because Aunt Peggy says I have to be more responsible. Mom's in a responsibility now, too? Plumber. Nurse's aide. All these jobs are racist against people who don't have skills. Hey, how about this one? Night work available for outgoing, attractive girls who like to make big dollars and have a good time. That's me! Peggy's got to show Luann that you only use credit cards in an emergency, not for toe rings and body glitter. Frivolous. Yes, frivolous. Exactly. Credit cards are a last resort after cash, check, plasma, urine, and alien urine. Sure, there's bone marrow, but that is more prudently used as a retirement vehicle, or so says Lou Dobbs. 80-year-old hypnotist dies in her sleep. How could Luann miss this? Hm? Bobby, do you know anything about this? That's Luann's new job. Don't tie up the phone. I'm her reference. Oh. <laughs> Luann, stop. You didn't audition for anything yet, did you? No. Oh, my God. What kind of twisted perversion have they trapped you into? I'm a roller derby skater. Roller derby? But wait, Luann, how is that a second job? We make $500 a game. Really? You ready, Luann? Prattley, what are you doing here? I thought you sold Hyundais. I sell fun. Doesn't matter if it's a fully loaded Hyundai XL or the finest roller derby team in Arlen. And I'd like to see you in both. Who are those women? That's gruesome Greta. She's the big one. There's Carly and Felicia, uh. the dancers together. <gasps> that was Noreen. Noreen really likes children. Well, at least I think she does because she has a whole lot of them. Uh, cheap shot, Greta! Uh. Aunt Peggy, I'll save you! No, you uh. won't! Uh. 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 Lots of them. Bobby, I know skateboarding isn't a crime, but it is in my driveway. Luann? Peggy? Not Luann and Peggy. Gold dust and the executionator. <sighs> Dang it, Peggy. How is this teaching Luann about responsibility? D don't roll around while I'm talking to you. By putting on these skates, I am putting Luann on solid footing. After playing the Maulers next week, she'll make enough to pay down her credit card debt. After taking on the Destroyers, she will catch up on her car payments. And after beating the tar out of those Poisonettes, she will make a deposit into an interest-bearing account. You just want to smash into people, don't you? You know, Hank, the money I make could go towards buying that patio furniture you've had your eye on. The Gatsby Collection? Yep. And I like to smash into people. After we get paid, I'm going to get my car painted in our team colors, so I'm all matchy. <laughs> you will do no such thing. Your Uncle Hank is on board by a thread. I appeased him with some fancy patio furniture talk. But if we screw this up, he'll still give us that look. I hate that look. <sighs> we all do. Now tape these rolls of pennies to my elbows. There's a giant magnet beneath the rink that controls their every movement. That woman is perfect. She's beautiful and could be a father figure. <laughs> Hey, Lucky. Want a corn chip? No, sir. This old boy won't eat a corn chip out of a bag no more. See, I used to make them. I had a hairnet and everything. You ain't tasted nothing till you've tasted a corn chip right off the line. Oh, someday I would like to try that. I'm gonna help you run down that dream, Bobby. How am I gonna get through them? By following these! I score. Score? Someone scored? Heck yeah. Aunt Peggy did. Aunt Peggy? Yeah, she knocked out their blockers so Lou Ann could scoot past their jammer. I'm so confused. See, your blockers stop the other team's jammers. The pivots can block, jam, or counter jam. Only the pivot or jammer can score. But how do they score? No one really knows. 
I like that new girl on your team, Bradley. She's gonna be good for the gate. Yeah, and glasses over there? Looks like she can knock a few heads. I'll get some toilet paper printed up with her face on it. We'll fill the place when you play my team next week. Or match, or whatever it's called. Knocky, knocky. I hope you're decent. Oh, you are. Payday. Oh, our paychecks. Yay! <laughs> oh, it only says $90. It should be for 500. Well, it is 500, uh, minus operating expenses. I gotta deduct for things like water, tissues and bandages, and lip, if I hear any more of it. <gasps> He's got no right to do that. Why do you women take that from him? It's the way it's always been. The longer we sit here and job at it, the more he's gonna charge us to keep the lights on. This is the smallest check for $500 I have ever gotten. Oh, I feel so used. Hey, that was some match last night. Shall we celebrate now and buy a piece of patio furniture or wait and get the whole grouping at the end of the month? I say we delay gratification. Well, I do like delaying gratification. Done. How are we going to buy Uncle Hank patio furniture when Lane Prattley barely gives us any money? You do not know it, Luann, but you just had an idea. Really? Ladies, what I'm about to tell you will make you rich. How? Oh. I'm going to make you eat that word, Greta. We will get rid of the owners and the players will take over. We will do everything right. It would sure be nice to have some money for childcare. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind a strengthening and conditioning coach and Carly would like a decent boombox for psych-up music. It's part of a process. Ladies, we will be able to have all those things and more. All we need is faith in ourselves and a thousand dollars each. A thousand dollars sure is a lot. Are you sure we're going to get that money back? I guarantee it. In fact, I have a pie chart to prove it. <laughs> Aunt Peggy, where are we going to get our share? From the bank. Banks loan out money every day. Why shouldn't they loan it to us? I envy you, Bobby. Eating a chip off the line is one of those experiences that changes your life. Birds fly a little slower, and pretty girls smile a little longer. It's like the whole world moves just for you. All that from eating a corn chip? Off the line, yes. We're here to eat a chip off the line. Sir, this factory isn't open to the public. No, it's okay. I used to work at one of these down in Waco. Move it along, please. Don't worry. Where are we going? Home. Thinking takes time. If they don't want customers to wear skates inside, they should have a sign. All the money places turned us down, even the drive through ones. What are we going to do now? We are going to go over their heads. Are you sure you want to get a cash advance at Peggy? Because when I did, it was really irresponsible. That is because you were living beyond your means. I am borrowing as a business investment. But the interest, the horrible interest. It is no matter to us because we will be paying this off before the end of the month with our profits. It's perfect. Even so, let's not mention it to your Uncle Hank. <laughs> There's my team, 30 minutes late. Of course, I'll have to round up and find you for the whole hour. It's easier on the computer. There's only one problem with your computation. You don't have a team. You never gave us contracts, so we are all free agents. We started our own team. <laughs> That's right, Prattley. And as the first player-owned team, see how fast he can run. <laughs> <laughs> This is what happens when you send a car dealer to do a department store owner's job. Whoa, whoa, this ain't just about my team. Once your girls hear about this, they're gonna wanna be on their own too. We gotta do something. Let's remember, we control the situation here. There's one thing years of hunting has taught me. If you wanna stop the pack, you need to take down the head elephant or talk to its husband.
So before we begin our first practice, why don't we do a warm-up skate? The blockers can go first, then the jammers, then the pivots. <sighs> you blockers always put yourself first. Everyone knows we jammers do all the work. We should lead. Jammers might win games, but pivots win championships. I'll go first. Oh! <sighs> ah, you stuck up little... <sighs> <laughs> ladies, ladies, there is no reason to fight anymore. As equal owners, we can solve all our issues through voting. Okay, that is 12 ties in a row, which leaves us with no time left to practice. I could bring in a chicken. Whichever person the chicken runs to, that's who wins. Well, of course the chicken's gonna run to you. It's your damn chicken. I vote you shut up. <laughs> Which by fighting amongst ourselves. Oh! You want some of this, cheap shot? Hey! Hank, we need to talk about that roller derby team your wife bought. My wife bought a roller derby team? You know anything about skates? They're very delicate pieces of machinery. Accidents happen. Now that's a metaphor. You just tell your wife to close up shop. I don't need to tell my wife anything. How did my wife buy a roller derby team? Well, I gotta run. I'm teaching Luann how to make dinner with leftovers. Frugal, frugal, frugal. Peggy, did you buy a roller derby team? What? The things you come up with, you crazy, crazy man. We all chipped in to buy it. Where the heck did you get the money? The same place I got Luann's share. A cash advance. On our credit card? <sighs> you were supposed to be teaching Luann fiscal responsibility. God, how am I going to face the guys at H&R Block when they see this on our return? I know, I know. And now it's a freaking disaster. We can't agree on anything. It all seems so easy in my head. Everybody would be everybody else's boss. How could that not have worked? Retta, wasn't it? No, Lane Prattley came by, and he was making threats. At least I think he was. He was kind of weaselly and indirect. He was making threats? Wait, that means he feels threatened. Hike. I've got to go fix everything. Now, that's what you said before you bought a roller derby team. That was false bravado. This is real bravado, Hank. You've got to trust me. Okay, but I'm canceling our credit cards. Now, I know we all hate each other, but we have too much money invested in this team to quit now. Heck, I'll go back to dirty phone talk before I skate with you all. Sit down. Lane Prattley is scared. He's scared because he thinks our team is a cohesive unit who can show the way to all the other skaters. He thinks we can pull together to win. And if he thinks all that, maybe we can pretend to do it. Do what? We're gonna put on a show. We will pretend to like each other just long enough to get Prattley to buy us out. Then we never have to see each other again. So here's my plan. I climb this fence and get you a chip. That's your plan. It took you two days to think of that? I had to cover all the angles. Are you okay? Suffering here. Oh my God, all your teeth are chipped. Now, to be fair, they was chipped before I got here. But these contusions and lacerations I place squarely at the feet of your corn chip company. But you climbed our security fence. That attractive nuisance is what I call Exhibit A. Now, I could sue you. My current quote is $53,000. Or... Oh, my God. Ain't it the truth. Bobby, can you drive a stick shift? I thought we were done playing other teams. You said they'd buy us out before we had to skate. She says lots of things. Sorry, Aunt Peggy. You're up. Okay, we can do this. It's only one hour, three times a week, indefinitely. It's just like riding a bicycle that you hate. I thought we were just doing this for show. I ain't rolling with y'all. Yeah, the hell with this. Excuse me, ladies. Moment of your time. Actually, we were just about to go skate. But as a democratically operated team, we will vote to see if we want to talk to you. Uh... It's unanimous. What do you got? I got $8,000 cash money to buy your team. 
White, you want to try to buy us with money? Are you going to write a check for our camaraderie? Are you going to fill our wallets with good times? <laughs> you make me laugh. Peggy, I sold enough Hyundais to know exactly where you're coming from. Now, I'm going to write a number down on a popcorn bag. I guess you ladies have a match to skate. For me. So, we have to keep skating together? Just until I cash the check. Then we'll never have to see them again. After all, we don't... Here you go. Congratulations, Luann. Your credit cards are now entirely paid up. <laughs> Yay! <gasps> oh. And Hank, just to show I am a woman of my word, Please look outside. The Gatsby Collection. Actually, we could only afford the West Egg Ottoman and the Tom and Daisy Recliner. Scary to think about the road not tra traveled, huh? Giorno, what can I get you? Well, what do you recommend to a couple of real big spenders? My boyfriend likes a surf and turf. Medium cheese pizza, two waters tap. Thanks for inviting me out, sir. Yeah, yeah, well, this ain't a social cause, son. You know the Strickland Propane Family Fun Day? The Strickland Propane Family Fun Day? We haven't done that in five years. Well, glad you liked it, because this party is what I'm giving everyone instead of health insurance, so we can't mess it up. That's why I'm putting you in charge. I will treat this picnic with all the gravity and seriousness it requires. Good evening and buongiorno. The live entertainment portion of our evening is about to begin, so would you please give a warm welcome to John Redcorn in Big Mountain Fudge Cake. John Redcorn? <laughs> Maria's Pasta and Pizza, are you ready to rock? There's a hole in my bucket where my money should go. There's a hole, and a hole, and a hole, big old hole. Let's get the hell out of here. So, sir, what specifically did you have in mind for this picnic? Uh-uh, I delegated. You're the lead monkey on the back of this ostrich, so go make me a picnic. Hank? Oh, uh, hey, John Redcorn. You finished already? We are finished forever. Got fired from playing for free. It don't get any lower than that. That dang manager never got what fudge cake is all about. No one ever does. We're either ahead of our times or possibly way behind, stuck in some more classical time. But either way, us and our times aren't seeing eye to eye. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure you and your times will work it out. I couldn't help overhearing you have a big event coming up. Yeah. And we sure could use a break, Hank. Well, uh... Don't you like to rock? Wow, you're sure giving me a lot to think about here, uh, but I got the family waiting at home. I'll get to work on him. Dang it. That is the third piece of toast you've broken. And you're always so careful with... Fun day. Do you think if I got good enough meats, it would count as entertainment? You gotta have live entertainment, Dad. Music, magic, 
Some people even do both. Entertainment is the only thing that distracts people from realizing how much they don't like each other. So what am I going to be listening to while I eat this? <sighs> I don't know. Finding a band for under $100 is harder than you think. Hey, Hank! Oh, uh, the picnic's going great, sir. Good, good, because I just got back from Strickland West, and they've had a tough year in terms of general disgruntlement. Really need this picnic to be fun. You see what kind of pressure I'm under? Mm, you're like one of them astronauts, honey. Hank? Uh, hey, John Redcorn. Did you find a band for your picnic? No, he didn't. And the poor bastards all twisted up over it. In the animal kingdom, many animals work together in symbiosis. The oxpecker bird will eat the ticks and parasites off a zebra. You and I can be zebra and oxpecker too. But why don't I let our demo tape do the talking? I am the reaper. Okay, I'm sorry, John Redcorn. I'm not hiring you. No way. I... I see. You know, you start doing massage to pay the bills, and you tell yourself, just a few more years of this, Johnny. And then one day, you look up and you're 40. You're 40, Hank! Okay there, John Redcorn. You, uh, you make some good points. Uh... Look, maybe you should stop waiting for other people to make things happen for you. What does that mean? Uh, well, maybe what you need to do is to, uh, bet on yourself. A lot of really successful people did that. Bet on myself? Sure. It's your dream. You make it happen. Bet on yourself. Wow, Hank. You are very wise. Thank you. Thank you. Dang it, Joe Jack. That helium is for the picnic. Sorry, honey. The guy asked me if I wanted honey mustard, and I almost took a yellow. The pony guy said, what? Well, what the hell is pony season? What in the... Joe Jack, I'm gonna have to call you back. Hey, John Redcorn. What's going on? Doing a little improvement on your land? I'm doing an improvement on my life. On all of our lives. You said it. Isn't it exciting? I'm following your advice, Hank. No more relying on other people to wake up and get us. Now I'm going to have a permanent place to play with my band. I'm betting on myself and opening a casino. But that's crazy. No, it's brilliant. Now we have a permanent venue for Fudge Cake to play, like Wayne Newton in the Stardust. You're a genius, Uncle Hank. There's a hole in my pocket where my money should go. There's a hole and a hole. Oh, God. So John Redcorn is opening a casino. I always wanted to see a white tiger before I died. I feel like it's my fault. I'm the one who told him to bet on himself. If I wasn't so dang busy finding entertainment for this picnic, maybe I could have done something to stop him. Relax, Hank. You know what loosens the caboose of any party? Big. Oh. They've got a super boffo Bachman Turner Overdrive meets Deep Purple versus ELO kind of sound. What are you, their manager? Yes. Can you believe the slot was open? I guess you were wrong, Hank. Dreams do come true. <laughs> Evening, gentlemen. Where can I find John Redcorn? Oh, he's the visionary right over there. The one dripping with sex appeal and turquoise jewelry. Hello, brother Indian. I'm Henry Mankiller with the Tribal Gaming Corporation. You got my email? Cool website. Yes, and I hope you are enjoying your subscription to Gaming Nation. Exactly what kind of Indian are you? I'm 164th Creek on my mother's side. So about your casino? Actually, it's just temporary. To get our band going. Let's show him. Gotta get money for the things I wanna buy. 
Gotta get money. So when the plane don't let me fly. Gotta get money. Or else I'm gonna die. This is where the drum solo usually goes. Huh. With a sound like that, you're not gonna need gaming for long. I Accelerate the process. We are, after all, in the dream building business. We got a dream that needs building. You see, we're a one-stop shopping for everything casino. We can save you the hassles of dealing with the white man's loan offices by financing everything through our tribal development division. And that means your band is making gold records that much faster. This pen has been used by many of our people to apply for financing. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? I just want a picture of a god dang hot dog. Dad, the news is not good. Swing band? No. 50s tribute band? No. Even the polka band? No. Well, there was this one guy. I think he felt sorry for us. His name is Bloomers. He does... imagitainment? Well, I have a band. Called Bloomers. Let's open with I need money. We can transition to gotta get money and do a whole money medley. <gasps> I love that song. Got to get the money for all the stuff I want. I'm gonna do some serious rocking. And then people are gonna hear us and love us and we're gonna be huge. This is so exciting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I bought a whole bunch of makeups for y'all to wear. Uh, Luann, can I speak to you outside? Listen, Yoko, I'm the manager of this act, and I'm sick of you trying to split them apart. What's a Yoko? Okay, Missy, that's it. If you ever come within 100 feet of fudge cake again, I will spend the rest of my life making you miserable. I'm going to... My purse is inside. Get! Oh! Is this fun? I suggest you book fudge cake now, because after the casino opens, they might be too big for you. They're gonna be helping kings and dignitaries get their groove on. They're not right for us, Dale. There are gonna be little kids at this picnic, and we already hired someone. Bloomers. Fine, but can I at least count on you all to be there tonight for the fudge cake when they open the casino? Well, I do have to be there to keep an eye on Buck. He wants to parlay the picnic money on the gaming tables. Don't be surprised if Buck forgets all about that because the power of rockin' does things to a man. It's true. I made a lot of my life decisions at a Foghat concert. I stand by them. This night is full of magic. Which one of these tables look lucky to you, old cop? Well, I'm not sure, but why don't I hold on to the picnic fun so you have more room for your winnings? Oh, what about that? I want, what about... Hold on! I gotta rub that waiter's head for luck. Hank, thank you. None of this would have been possible without your advice. Yeah, that's okay. I, I don't really want to take credit for any of this, but uh, you're welcome, I guess. Indian. We're winning big tonight. Everybody, put your hands together for big, a mountain, a fudge cake! Thank you, Arlen. And now here's a song about a band. A band that no one gave much of a chance to until one day that band showed everyone that they could rock. A one and a two and a... Praise police. Okay, everyone, let's have a nice, orderly egress. Is this some kind of joke? We're shutting you down, sir. This is an illegal gaming establishment. But we're on Indian land. Look at me. Look at all the headdresses. Yes, sir. And that land is in gaming? Didn't you wonder why there weren't any other Indian casinos in Texas? I thought it would work to our advantage. They're wheeling away our shot at glory, just like they're wheeling away them shiny machines. Fudge cake's in a bad, bad way. Ah! But this is my land, my one chance to be heard. I've already spent all the money I borrowed. How can this be happening? 
Texas tribes traded their federal gaming rights for state recognition of their tribes. Now, you can let the folks play for trinkets and cones and whatnot, but not for money. But that's incredibly lame. Well, yes, but legal. Hot damn match, Blackjack! Congratulations, sir. Very lucky. Blackjack pays a stuffed lion. How am I gonna stick this in a G-string? Where's everyone going? They're gonna miss our show! Ah, uh, this is a sad, sad day. The white man never stops putting you down. The white man? How could you not know there was no gaming in Texas? Look, the dream business is not extremely detail-oriented. Anyway, just stop by to give you a friendly reminder. You still owe us $23,000. I could scorch fighting the white man's lawyers, which we have a lot of. Instead, I have a solution that's good for all of us. Permit to allow toxic dumping? Unless you have another way to come up with the money. Oh, and uh, keep in mind your topsoil will become very flammable. Oh, not only have I failed as a musician, I'm gonna have to destroy my own land. My people's land. Come on, guys. Did we give up when I left the E off of all of our merchandise? No! And we wore those fudge cack t-shirts with pride. Now you guys keep focusing on being stars, and I'll focus on a way to fix this. You look like I feel whenever I run over one of my dogs. Everybody seems pretty happy. Bloomers has good buzz. Yep, we sure pulled it off. No, Hank, we all did. Oh, I mean, we did. Bloomers! Get in the car. Why? I just got here. Hey, I'm driving you to the green room, Essay. I got all kinds of cheeses back there. Gribo. I got him. Good. Make him disappear. You want me to kill him? Oh, just drive him around. But I'm happy you're being proactive. There are no bad ideas. I want to go. I'm bored. You said this would be fun. I thought there was going to be bloomers. Make bloomers be here. Where the heck is bloomers? Dad, things are not good. I've been circulating among the kids as Roberto Hillenbrand, and they're bored. If Bloomers doesn't show up, there's talk of a possible egging. Hank, what the heck is going on? I just got a back full of raw hamburger. I don't know what happened, sir. Now they're tipping over Porter John. If you got a plan B, you better put it into action pronto. Mr. Strickland makes a good point. All hell does appear to be breaking loose. At least if you book fudge cake, you tried something. Oh, let's tip this one over. Occupied, honey. Dale, get me fudge cake. We got a gig. We got a gig. Oh, wow. The Strickland Family Days Picnic. Family days? That ain't rock and roll. What does it matter? An audience is an audience. Fudge cake don't play family picnics. It'd send the wrong message. I ain't going. And I double ain't going. Are you crazy? This is a paying gig with hundreds of people. Yeah, well, the cake don't sell out. What in the heck is going on? Where's the rest of the band? I thought I owed it to you to tell you in person. We broke up. Fudge cake is dead. <sighs> well, I guess I'll go break it to the crowd that we don't have any entertainment. They'll probably yell and throw stuff at me, then Buck will yell and throw stuff at me, and fire me. Well, maybe that'll be entertaining for folks. Hold on a second, Hank. John Redcorn, you're the heart and soul of the cake, man. You can play this gig yourself. Alone? Me? Besides, kids aren't going to want to listen to me. The BMF sound is universal. You can adapt. Hmm. I guess there is that song about killing myself. I could rewrite it so it's about personal hygiene. Love it. Now go! Hello, and welcome to the Strickland Family Fun Day. I am John Redcorn. Here's a song I wrote after government agents shut down my gambling establishment, and I wanted to die. Wake up, just want to wash myself. Clean my wrist, scrub my brains out. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey, hey ya, hey, hey ya, hey. They'll miss me when I do. So oh, you and your son having to. Hey, hey ya, hey. hey.
There's a hole in the jar where the cookie should go. There's a hole in the tank where the fish should go. There's a hole and a hole and a hole. Yeah, when I first found Red Corn, he was in some go nowhere white snake meets white lion meets great white rip off group. But I recreated him as the Native American Raffy. Hey, uh, hey, hey, uh. There's a hole and a hole and a hole. There's a hole and a hole and a hole. I tell you, Elvin, this is rock and roll. Hell yeah! See, Dale, I'm a man of my word. You didn't cry when you got your tetanus shot, so ice cream's on me. How much will you guys give me if I literally scream for ice cream? Dude, let's run back and forth. Bobby, never run in a parking lot. Those cars look parked, but they could be driven by slow-moving seniors. Yes, sir. Sorry, Dad. Joseph, stop that. Yeah, in a minute. Joseph, cut that out. It's dangerous. Okay, sorry, Mr. Hill. Don't make Hank have to tell you again. You take the hill, but I'm scared, so we're all scared, Sarge. Move up the hill right now. Yes, sir. Son, mind your table manners. Okay, but I'm um, all right, your mom, when you get back. Son, I think I asked you. Oh, you gotta put that out. No more smoking in restaurants, remember? Excuse me, miss, this is Texas. Arlen passed that no smoking ballot initiative, Dale. Let me just finish this once. Put it out. But... But my rights. I surrender! A, two, three, a back in line, son. Outrageous. <sighs> sure, today it's us smokers, but who tomorrow? Pudgy white guys with strange propane fixations? Dale, that smoking ban barely squeaked by, but it did pass, so it's the law. That's awfully convenient, especially since I didn't vote. I voted! I guessed right. Four out of five times. All right, everyone, settle. It's assignment time. Okay, Peggy, you're all set with your Waffle House beat. Yeah, about that, Roddy Ray. I was thinking this week, instead of writing something unimportant, I could cover something important. Change of pace. Sorry, Peg. Now, everyone else, the crossing guard's about to have a major contract dispute. I call it! It's mine, mate! Jenkins, you got the touch. You want to look into this monkey business? Monkey business is my business. Uh, Joseph? Yeah? Don't you think you've been in there kind of a long time? I don't know. It's been 40 minutes. Maybe other people need to use the bathroom, too? Get out of the bathroom, Shug. Sure, Mom. When you're done, come get me. I don't know where I'll be. Uh... Aren't you supposed to be reporting on the Waffle House? Why waste my time? I can file my story now. Nothing happened again. Roddy Ray hits the delete key, and we are done for another week. Oh, hey, Hank. Listen, I just had sort of a quick question. How do I get my son to respect me? Well, boys need their dads to be strong role models. You just need to, you know, be a man. 
Damn it, Hank, I'm 42 years old. It's kind of late for me to start the whole being a man thing. Is there a shortcut or at least a, a website? No. This is going to be tough. I can't even take that like a man. Son, would you reach me the toast? Sure thing, Pop. Bastards. Sorry, honey, you can't smoke in here. <sighs> Can you let it go, ma'am? I've had kind of... You got a problem? Yes, I do. I need my smoke, so no, sir, I will not put this out. <sighs> I am a powerful, functional adult at the peak of his life who demands to be heard. My voice is a flame that cannot be extinguished. <sighs> give me smoking or give me death. Ha! Jenkins here. At the Waffle House, eh? Hmm. Let me see if this pony has legs. Oh! Damn that, Bob Jenkins. Listen to this. Smoking Bandit lights up controversy. Smoking Bandit? What's that mean? A mysterious man of menthol has declared a battle of the butts, standing up for the smoking community in a defiant yakety yakety around 9 p.m. last night. Oh, at the Waffle House. That is my beat, the thief. Nine o'clock? Hey, isn't that about the time you were eating waffles here? <laughs> Get this, Shugs, and the sheriff vows to prosecute this rogue to the fullest extent of the law. Wow. The the fullest extent of the law? Mm-hmm. That's what the sheriff vows. But our extent is pretty full. We Can you imagine, Shug? Whoever this cowboy is, he's in a lot of hot water. Well, not yet. I mean, no one took his picture, right? Or did they? Did they, did they get a description? Let's see. Only that he was as slim and white as the cigarette he so boldly enjoyed. Uh. Gah. What have I done? Really gribbled myself this time. Don't you stare at me like that. This is more heat than I can handle. Okay, stay calm. Just burn the evidence. You've done it before. Ah, that's better. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. We'll just destroy the evidence another way. No one will suspect Dale Gribble if Dale Gribble isn't a smoker. Genius. See? That's why I'm out here, and you're the ones in the tank. Yep. Morning, Bill. Just taking out some garbage, as per my usual routine. Yep. Morning, boys. Hey, Morning, Dad. Scribble. Nothing to see here, boys. Carry on. You want to melt some Legos? Eh, maybe. There's a cool thing in the paper about this smoking bandit guy. Yeah, I heard about that. He sounded so cool. He doesn't let the Waffle House tell him how to live his life. So, you really look up to him, this bandit fellow. Oh, you're still here? Something important in here that's needed back at the house. <laughs> See you later, Joseph. Your dad can be kind of weird sometimes. Yeah. Let's go spit into some ant holes. Welcome to Attaché. Do you have a reservation? Oh, I'll just be at the bar. Steven, what can I get you? How about an ashtray, my good man? Hey, you can't do that in here. Can't do what? Savor the fresh, smoky air of sweet liberty? Go ahead. Sick your stormtroopers on me. Of course, average police response time is roughly 28 minutes, while I am done in less than three. Hmm. I am the smoking bandit! See you in the history books, people. You need to be wearing both denim and leather. Gentlemen, I truly regret not meeting your dress code, but I can't say I am sorry about this. <gasps> Yep. Yep. Bill, get that dang cigarette out of your mouth. No, I'm not smoking it. I just like the look. 
I'm told it's very bandit. All I can say is I wish I had the smoking bandit's courage. He's the Rosa Parks of nicotine. He's a hero, just like the guy who rides his bicycle faster than French people. I bet he smokes, too. No, the bandit's just a jackass, Bill. And he's breaking the law. Did you forget about that? <sighs> Why do people idolize these bad boy idiots? Well, you know, man, some of them talking about them damn old mysterious charm with that... You know, I, I have no idea, man. People just have no, no sense, man. They don't fact. Exactly. You can't pick and choose what laws you want to obey. Sure, I'd like to tape a baseball game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball, but that's just not the way it works. Hello, Joseph. How's it going? Did you hear? The smoking bandit struck again. They say he stopped the Shonies from getting robbed. Then he smoked in it. <sighs> <laughs> hey, Joseph. So that bandit's pretty cool, huh? I bet you'd like a dad like that. Yeah, but... <sighs> so, what if I were to tell you I was the bandit? <laughs> yeah, right. What if I told you I was an elephant? No, really, I am. See? Wow. You just made smoking seem uncool. Well, it's late. You should start getting ready for bed. Now I'm gonna go watch TV. I bet he'd listen to you. Hey, don't talk. Are you serious? In a minute. Well, give me the details, man. Manners! The Waffle House was my beat, Jenkins. The Bandit is my story, and I want it. Oh, Peggy, I feel terrible. I'll tell you where the Bandit will strike next. Oh. Channel 84. He sent in a tape. Some sort of video manifesto. Ah, they always leave us for television. I am not giving up on this. Well, I am. And we have just received the tape from Arlen's notorious smoking bandit. Message. Let's watch it together as father and son. Dad, hand. The bandit has apparently scrambled his voice to conceal his identity. Oh, I don't understand him. Uh, it's clear as day. It's cool to respect your dad and like him. Now he's saying real rebels are the rebels who obey their fathers. Yeah. <sighs> Look at me, I'm the celery bandit. Dude, you're missing the message. You're not like the bandit when you smoke. You're like him when you break the law and run away. I'm listening. He fights back. He disobeys unfair stuff like, like homework and, and math tests and girls who tell other girls that I'm a dork. Math is so unfair. How are kids like us supposed to know all those answers? Yeah, no one has the right to teach us stuff we don't want to learn. That's what our Bill of Constitution's all about. <laughs> Okay, books away for the quiz. Take one and hand the rest back. Bobby, Joseph, did you two hear me? We're not giving out your stupid quiz. Yeah, we're the math quiz bandits. Uh, no. How it works is you take... Here to kids you don't like math. Yeah, you take your stupid quiz. <laughs> okay, now what? God dang it, mister, you're gonna explain yourself this minute. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You see this, Hank? I can't have them spreading this bandit nonsense to the rest of the kids. They're suspended. It's that dang smoking bandit idiot. He's a bad influence. Yeah, the bandit is making my own son defy me even more. It's pretty ironic. How is that ironic? Oh, well, uh... I'm probably just misusing the word ironic, as people so often do. You know what? For our kids' sake, the two of us have to hunt this jackass down and turn him over to the authorities. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, this week is a little busy for me. You want Joseph to look up to you, right? Well, bringing in the bandit is how you're going to earn your son's respect. Uh, of course. I, I can't wait to see the look on his face. Mm. You know, I don't really see why we have to go after the bandit. This is one of those things that's funner to talk about than actually do. That is why we're going after this guy. 
Where are you boys off to? To catch the bandit. Oh, I started some fresh ice, so don't jostle the trays. Roddy Ray, hold the front page. Headline, Peggy Hill captures smoking bandit. Well, no, not yet. Well, I have to capture him first. I can't believe we'll get to meet the bandit. Do you think he's a matchman or a lighter man? If he beats up our dad, do you think he'll let us live with him? Sure, he's a hero to you now, but when we rip that cigarette out of that guy's mouth, he'll probably stick his thumb in it. Right, Dale? Yeah, uh, he... Okay, here's Attaché. Let's get started. Well, that was one of the bandit's first strikes. You think he's likely to repeat himself? Don't they say criminals always return to the scene of the crime? Uh, not if they don't want to get caught, Hank. What do you think we should do? Well, if you study the bandit's hits, he strikes north to south in a childish grid formation. So we should try... there. Okay, come on, you ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Yo, can't let you in wearing work boots. That's why I wear black patent leather rubber-soled Watchmen's Oxfords. Classy, easy to run in, and they satisfy... You know a lot about bars and shoes. Okay, now we move deeper into the night. Everyone put on your leather work gloves in case he's a biter. Hey, your dad hunts people like animals. Yeah, cool. Your name's not on the list. Excuse me, you do not know my name. Okay, what's your name? Peggy Hill, Arlen Bystander. Not on the list. So it's like that. All right, mister, I lied. My name is Annabeth Fitzwater. Go on, check the list. You're not on it. Fine, I'm really Professor Helen Marriott Booth, and I've got all night. Okay, kids, let's assess. The bandit wants his smoking to be noticed. That club's dance floor has a smoke machine. Would the bandit strike there? No, sir. He'd go somewhere more... somewhere else. Smart lad. So do we move down the street in formation or not? Um, I, I, I think, uh, no. Exactly, because we don't want to look like we're searching for him. What should we do? You want me to tell you what to do? So you can do it? Well, yeah, dude. I mean, Second, I... I think I just got a, a bottle cap in my eye. <sighs> All right, what do you say we call it a night? But I still want to meet the bandit. Yeah, I want to see him get his smoke on. Look, Dale, I know Joseph is acting right tonight, but he still idolizes this guy. If we don't finish this job, you're going to be right back to where you were last week. Stuck outside my own bathroom. But catching this guy is going to be hard. Or maybe not. Tell you what, I'm gonna head in there on a scouting mission. Son, hold these for me. You guys meet me in the alley. Hello? Anyone here? No. Perfect. Hey, quick! I found the bandit! He dropped this, then fled into the john. I'm going in. Kids, guard the door. Hank, make sure that bartender doesn't butt in. Be careful, Dad. Okay, bandit. Freeze! Ah! 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 Oh, yeah! <laughs> I caught him wriggling out the window. He's kind of pitiful. Maybe we should let him go. No way! Hey, let's give him a swirly. Let's give him an atomic wedgie. Or let him go. Dang it, Dale. The whole point of coming out here was to show the boys this guy's sniveling, frightened face. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, maybe we, uh, maybe we should let the bandit go. Uh. But does the bandit swear that he will never, ever do anything this asinine again, or I will kick his ass? Hold on, I'll ask him. Bandit, do you understand so on and so forth? He's nodding in agreement. Go on, get. Ah, quit your crying and just scram. The bandit is gone, for good. To make sure I confiscated his six. I can't believe I thought the bandit was cool. You know who's cool? 
That rapper with the bullet in his nose. Bullet nose! You have one wrong sneezer and the whole joint goes up. The bullets will still be there tomorrow, kids. But right now, it's bedtime. After flossing and eating your vegetables. Okay. Sure, Dad. Priscilla Pemmelman. These kids are getting antsy, Kagan. No. Elizabeth, Sinewood, Fatherton, Millicent, Millie, Mitchell, Waterberg, Duchess of... Fine. Twelve dollar cover. Oh. I don't have any money. in the history books, people. Okay, Dooley, let's hear about your science project. My potato grew eyes. I hope she likes the rocks of Rainy Street. It's all I could come up with on the way to the bus. Sorry to interrupt. Just want to remind everyone to sign up for the fun run on Saturday. Have a good time and raise money to buy the school something nice or essential. I usually try not to motivate kids this way, but if all your friends are doing something, shouldn't you be doing it too? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Nancy invited us to a progressive dinner this Saturday. You know, where you eat a different course at each person's house. Well, that sounds pointless. Exactly. So I suggested a progressive breakfast. This Saturday, it'll be juice at the Gribbles, eggs at the Supernoosin phones, and then back here for toast. Uh, wouldn't it be easier just to eat it all together someplace? We eat breakfast like that every day, Hank, and frankly, it's getting old. Sorry, Mom. I can't make it Saturday. I'm running a 5K. You're what? Oh, wait, is running a 5K some kind of rap thing? No, Dad. It's a bunch of kids running to raise money for the school. Well, that's great. When you cross that finish line, I'll be right there with the video camera, even though it brings out certain in... I will host the breakfast by myself. A breakfast that, apparently, will not be videotaped. It's official. I need to start wearing suspenders. Mr. Boomhauer, how would you like to sponsor me in the fun run? You would be sending a positive message to the generation of today. Unless, of course, you want us to start doing drugs. God dang, man. Between them getting that old Girl Scout cookies and the band candy, it never won't stop, man. Thank you, Mr. Boomhauer. Are you interested, Mr. Dotrieve? Interested in what, Bobby? The stuff I just said. Tell it to me again. I like it when people talk to me. Bill. Mm. Three dollars per. Sorry, I'm sponsoring Joseph. He's not running. Just the same. Check out this goodie bag. Sport gum, squishy ball, banana nut protein bar. Oh. I want a burger headband. Well, the real goody is that you raised $121 for your school, Bobby. You even got Joe Jack to pledge, and he doesn't even pay his alimony. Let's have all the kids at the fun run starting line. Better line up now, son. I'll wait for you at the finish line. Kids on your mark. Get slapped. Hey, Hank. You believe the things I do for this school? Hank Hill. Hi, Dad. Can you pick me up? I'm at the mocha bean. The mocha bean? Right by the starting line? So you just quit. 
You didn't even make it 1K? It's a fun run, Dad. I ran until it stopped being fun. Happened quick. What about all the people who sponsored you? Okay, how's this? Why don't you shoot some video of me running across the finish line? I'll just put my face over my latte so I'll work up a sweat. <sighs> what has the MTV done to you, son? Wow, there sure was a lot of toast left over. That is what happens when people decide to stuff themselves on juice. Bobby, this is a pedometer. It measures how far you walk. By the end of today, I want five kilometers on there. That's 3.1 miles. You know what I'd really love to do? Learn how to fix a car. Get moving. <sighs> Feeling it in your calves now? That's 10 isotonic massaging plates working at 3,000 pulses a minute. Yeah. You were gone all afternoon and you only walked a half a mile? Maybe when it gets to 100 miles, it flips over. Get in the truck. Only two and a half miles to go. Uh, I'm chafing. Great effort, runner. Sorry, coach. I'll get him out of your way. My son's a few hundred yards into being taught an important lesson. We'll finish up at the reservoir. I like the way you were gutting it out out there. It's just the kind of guy I want on my team. How'd you like to join Trek? On the team? Uh, Coach, this is the first time you're seeing him. You might be getting the wrong idea. Yeah, I hurt my knee putting my sneakers on. As long as you listen and are willing to be taught, you'll always have a place in my system. You hear that, Bobby? You're going to be part of a system. Look at those guys. They're going to expect me to run and compete and finish. I'm just going to bring the whole team down. Bobby, when they only care that you tried. <sighs> I'm going to try. Hey, Booby Hill, what are you doing here? The lunchroom's that way. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like I'm your new teammate. <gasps> what? If you mess up, we'll mess you up. Track spikes are sharp, and we're not afraid to use them. <laughs> I know how you can get kicked off the team. Take a javelin and throw it into the crowd. I mean, it would do something. <sighs> I better get down there. There are 10 hurdles in the race, but the highest one is right here. Remember that. Hey, hell, grab that shot put. Let's see what you got. <laughs> you sure you don't want to cut me? Hill, track is like a picture puzzle. Sometimes the weird-looking piece is the one you need. Yep, Bobby's going to be wearing sweatpants for the right reason. Still, I must say track and field doesn't really seem like a fuller sport. Hey, Bobby, how was your first day of practice? I'm really tired, and I think all the guys hate me. Well, they're just giving you the business, Bobby. In football, we used to make the new kids breathe through Bill's sock. I was happy to contribute. And oh yeah, Boomhauer used to do this hilarious bit where he told me my mother died. <laughs> it took the sting out of it when she actually did. So the guys don't really hate me? That's right. Just hang in there, keep listening to your coach, and do your best. You'll see it'll pay off. Okay. Is there any lesson sports can't teach? If you want, I'll think of you when I'm throwing. What sort of song you're throwing next? Why aren't you warming up? Why get warm when I'm already hot? <laughs> you're a 30-foot shot putter with a 10-foot mindset. You're out. Hill! What? Coach, it was a joke. A funny joke. Grab the shot put you're throwing next. What? But you saw me throw. Landry, next thrower. It's easy, Hill. Visualize the action, then act. Watch closely with Sana Song. This isn't Hill's throw. It's your throw. All 
All right, Hill. You blew it for us, Chain. Maybe your girlfriend wants to see me kick your ass. And 99 and 100. Okay, girl. Dad, we won, and I competed. I actually shot the put. Or did I put the shot? Either way, I threw it. Well, what did I tell you? You showed the coach you had heart, and he gave you a chance. I must have had more heart than Chain Wasana song, because he sat on the bench. You competed while another guy sat on the bench? There's a bottle of sport drink in the garage I've been saving. Let's open it. Hey, Chain, if this were an egg, it'd take some kind of crazy bird to lay it. I'm trying to hyper-focus, okay? You're eating sugar right before the hundred? Hell, sweat's off. <laughs> the finish line is inside of me. Now you've tasted. Um, I like chocolate more than failure. That means I should eat more chocolate? I, I don't understand. Understand this, gentlemen. Anytime, anywhere, if I think someone's dogging it, it'll be Bobby Hilled. Winning is the carrot, and Bobby is the stick. Whew, I had to stop. They were putting up hurdles for the next race. Hill, you're going to take this team to the district finals. <laughs> Boy, I sure wish I could have gone to Bobby's meet today. Why do I always have to be Mr. Strickland's character witness? Well, I think it's an honor. Mom! Dad! We won! I need some ice. My hand's sore from all the high-fiving. Oh, great. Did the coach let you throw the shot put again? Nah, I was busy doing the 440. You ran the 440? Coach said I'm a secret weapon he can deploy anywhere. Oh, and guess what? I've got a nickname. The guys call me... The stick. Sure, that's because you stuck it out. Yeah, I'm actually starting to have fun. That's right. See, I don't punish you to make you miserable. I punish you to make you happy. I'm getting it. Jump long, long jumpers. Get some altitude, pole vaulters. Boy, this sport does not lend itself to good cheers. Hank, we have a situation. Sometimes it takes them two tries just to get on the couch. Oh, I can't watch. Oh, the humanity. I wasn't brought up to second-guess a coach, but this makes no sense at all. I'm gonna find out what's going on. You think Bobby's bad? Imagine if we had a child. <laughs> I'd love him anyway. You're halfway home, Hill. Still think curfew is bogus? Excuse me, Coach Palmer. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Hill. I've got Bobby working on falling on his hands. You know, I'm not one of those dads who gets mad if the coach doesn't play my son. Matter of fact, Bobby shouldn't be anywhere near a hurdle. He's embarrassing himself. No, he's embarrassing the guy he's replacing. You're using Bobby to shame the good athletes? Since I started using Bobby as the stick, the team's been on fire. We haven't lost a meet. Huh. Well, that sounds good, but it's making me feel kind of sick. All I know is Bobby's teammates are setting personal bests, and we're headed for the district finals. Excuse me, I just saw my pole vaulter light a cigarette. Hell, forget the hurdles, pole vault! How was that? Well, I guess it's nice that the coach calls Bobby his go-to guy, but... Feels like one of those fairy tales where the genie gives you a wish, but you ask for it in slightly the wrong way and you end up with a solid gold head or something. The correct strategy with genies is to wish for more wishes. Just seems wrong. Nothing's expected of him. Bobby never did pole vault. He just limboed under the bar. <sighs> in a way, life was simpler when Bobby was making collages out of People magazine. Hey, Dad. I'm carbo-loading. Yeah, uh, here's the thing. Bobby, do you understand why the coach is playing you so much? Of course I do, Dad. My input delta yields, you know, a tangent to a winning hypotenuse or something. Well, it's mostly because you're really bad. The other guys try harder so they aren't humiliated by being replaced by you. I knew I was contributing. I just wasn't sure how. 
I'm a motivator. I'm like a big rally monkey. Bobby, you don't motivate anyone by being lousy. You motivate them by giving a heartbreaking speech or dying or something. You know, I'm thinking you should quit this team. Quit the team I brought to the finals? No way. I need $90 for the jacket. $90? I went for the leather sleeves. Ramon Alejandro. Hank, I bet this reminds you of when you got your letter. Oh, sure. Only I led the league in rushing and sacrificed all the cartilage in my knees. Other than that, deja vu. Gary Anderson. Dad, I know what I want to do with my life. Be a professional motivator. I just need to find a field in which I have no potential. Hmm. I'd make a terrible dam builder. Why don't you just try to be good at something? Don't try to motivate a motivator, Dad. And the man who brought us to the district finals, Bobby Hill. Coach, any sprinters acting lackadaisical? High jumpers showing enough grit? Everyone's brought their... Taking a nap if you need him. <sighs> well, the meet's almost over. I wonder if Bobby's gonna humiliate anyone besides himself. There's Bobby, look, right there. Oh, he's curled up in his little letterman's jacket. He's sleeping? Damn it, that does it. Wake up, Bobby. We're going home. <sighs> Ugh, but the team needs me. Is there a problem, Mr. Hill? Yeah, there is. A real coach brings out the best in his players. A jackass puts his worst guy on display like it's a sideshow. In the future, when every team has a designated Bobby Hill and I'm in the Track Hall of Fame, maybe you'll feel differently. There's a Track Hall of Fame? The relay is about to start. We take this, we win the meet. Coach, I hyperextended and I can't run the relay. You what? I stretched too hard. I saw you talking to the stick, and I got scared I was going to get Bobby Hilled. Landry, I need a runner. You're disqualified. Murphy's still long jumping. I, I, I don't see chain. Landry! I, 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 don't, I don't have anyone left. I, I never envisioned a no-sub scenario. You don't have to. You've got Bobby. You can put him in. What? what? This isn't a stick situation. Failing would actually hurt us here. Okay. Okay, I can do this. Hill, uh, any good paradigm can be inverted. Imagine a one. Forget about that nonsense, Bobby. You just have to do two things. Move this leg, then move that one. And don't quit until the race is over. You can do it, Bobby. You can try. such a butterfingers. Bobby, pretend the baton is the remote. Oh, yeah. With one leg to go, it's Tom Landry's to lose. Maybe not. Keep going, Bobby. Don't lay down with him. The only one still on his feet. Landry wins! Bobby! Oh, Bobby! Yeah, you oh, just did it! Yeah. You did it! That's how you motivate a team. Well, Bobby, you lost a huge lead and it took a bunch of guys falling down, but you did it. I think I'm gonna throw up. Go ahead, son. You've earned it. Yeah! <laughs>
I'm serious, guys. You don't want to be under me. Both Dale and Boomhauer are going away on the same weekend. Sometimes I wish I was a worm, so I could cut myself in half and crawl in both their suitcases. That'll do, Bill. Come on, I'll see you later, man. They're coming back, right, Hank? Tell me they're coming back. Damn it, Bill, we go through this every Memorial Day. Boomhauer will be back from his family reunion before you know it. And even though Dale said he'd be back from his UFO convention in 35 Romulan light years, it really only amounts to three days. Uh-oh, that could be a problem. Better let me take a look at that. Don't bother. I'm sure it's just the engine. Look, you're going on a long trip. I'll just take it for a test drive. Well, that's okay. The, uh, the commander of the Federation is a mechanic at Pep Boys. He'll take a look at it. You, you are coming back, aren't you, Hank? It's fine, Hank. She purrs like a kitten. Brrr. See? Pipe down, Dale. I can't hear the... Oh, come on in. Hit it, Gribble. Go, 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 go. Boomhauer? No, no, Hank? Uh, <laughs> so all of your trips have been a lie? You guys were fishing? Well, if your goal was to make Bill Drotreve look like a fool, then you have succeeded. Bill, you have to believe me, that wasn't our goal. It was just a byproduct. Well, I won't stand for it. <laughs> Again, byproduct. It's just wrong, Peggy, ditching Bill like that for 18 years. The level of deception is unbelievable. Hank, you should get those guys to throw my next surprise party. Well, I can understand why they want a little vacation from him. He definitely gets on your nerves. But still, you just this, as usual. About my surprise party? Make sure Boomhauer videotapes it. I want to see the look on my face when I walk through that door. Are you sure about this, Hank? It's gonna be okay, Bill. Fellas? Uh, Bill and I enjoy fishing, too. And if it would be all right, we'd like to come, too. Well, you uh, know, I'm coming on. Uh, look, I promise I'll keep them in line. Sure, why not? Oh, thank you for including me, fellas. <laughs> it makes me feel special. Yeah, screw it. We might as well invite the whole world. You know, wives and kids. You might have wanted this trip to be just the four. Keep it in check, Bill. Mom, I found my bait shirt. Can you believe it was in Dad's rag bucket? Boomhauer, I'd move from behind this truck if I were you. Ah, uh, wait, the guy behind us is talking on a cell phone. Might as well have a bottle of whiskey in his mouth. You'd better switch back. Gummy foot, anyone? Just one of the many perks of riding in the A-car. You hear that, Bill? You're in the A-car. Hey, what do y'all think is going on in the- Right, women and their conversations. Reality TV is so wonderful. Yeah, man, don't mind on that. I'm, I'm in your little, little apricot scrub. I don't I'm taking years off your face, man. I don't skin <laughs> With these new maxi pads, I feel confident enough to ride a bicycle. 
Damn it, Bill. You just ruined a perfectly good comedy routine. But I... You made it dirty and ruined the fun for everybody. Sorry, Hank. Now I don't even get a turn. I have to go to the bathroom. Hold it. Number two. Pull over, Boomhauer. Uh, not, not the gas go, the shamrock. What's with all the beer? Oh, uh, the price was too good to pass up. I guess one of you is gonna have to ride in the B car. Dibs! Okay, this is your chance. Don't slobber and don't wipe your hands on the seat. Church rules. Gotcha. And for dinner, I have a Greek salad, which is eight net carbs, a steak the size of my fist, 11 net carbs, and all the sugar-free gelatin I want. So that's Wednesday. Now, what about Thursday? Well, Thursday is the same exact menu as Tuesday, but I'll go through it anyway. I wake up to egg whites and salsa. Two net carbs. Oh, God. Hey, dude, check out my eyelids. Ugh. Uh-oh, we're out of potato chips. Well, I'm sorry, but you'll just have to wait till I go shopping. Give me the list. I can go to the store. Sorry, Bobby. This isn't one of your video games where if you lose the grocery money, you can kill someone and get it back. Please. It's one less thing for you to do. Fine. Here's a hundred dollars. You are not to deviate from the list, mister. And I am counting the change. Where are the guys? They were right behind us. Well, when I left, Bill took charge of the map, so they probably got lost. Diddy dum 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 squank! What the heck happened to you guys? Well, man, that old bonehead didn't got us lost, man. I thought we'd make better time by taking this blue highway I found on the map. It was a river. All right, look, guys, Bill didn't mean to screw up. Are you kidding? Bill was great. If we hadn't gotten lost, we never would have eaten the best tacos in the world or gotten these great Tico's Tacos hats. Tico's Tacos? Yeah, yeah, I know, Hank. Unscheduled stop. Got us behind schedule. Could have given us stomach larvae. But you gotta hear what Bill told the cashier. Well, I just said, if it's nacho cheese, then who's is it? <laughs> nacho. <laughs> <laughs> nacho cheese. Huh. I don't know what changed. When I was in the car, everything was so tense. <laughs> I don't... I don't... Ah, Bill. Huh. Wait. I see what's going on here. Yeah, all these years it wasn't Bill they were avoiding. It was me. Oh, I just got that nacho cheese joke. But you think so? That's terrible. <laughs> Is that all you got, fat man? Hi. Stop pretending to fix things that are A, not ours, and B, not broken. Now go out there with your friends. Huh, maybe I should try some three-in-one oil on this. I know what's going on here. Your feelings are hurt because sometimes your friends have a better time without you than they do with you. But that doesn't mean they don't like you. It just means you might have to change your behavior just a little bit. What do you mean, change my behavior? It's not a big deal, but sometimes you have a tendency to, you know... Be a little bossy with the guys, just sometimes. Bossy? If I wasn't bossy, those guys would be in trouble all the time. Yes, but nobody likes being mothered all the time. Except for Bobby. He really responds to it. So what are you saying? Charge this vacation. Who knows? Maybe you'll have fun too. And just keep my mouth shut when they do something stupid? Well, what kind of friend would I be then? Damn it, Hank. Do you want a Tico's Tacos hat or not? <sighs> yes. Dude, see that girl sunbathing with her top unhooked? You drop this crab on her back, and when she jumps up, I'll look at her boobage. Joseph, put the crab down. Hey, check it out. Cool. Dude, with one of those metal detectors, we could, like, make tons of money. We gotta buy one. We can use the cash your mom gave you. But it's for groceries. And I told her I was going to be responsible with the money. We can turn your mom's hundy into a fortune. It'd be irresponsible for us not to get it. Hmm, you make a lot of good points. Stop fussing with my tail. Just make me a wig out of seaweed. Uh, hey there, guys. Oh, hey, Hank. Um, we just got a little sidetrack in loading the boat. No, uh, looks like you guys are having a blast. Here, let me help. Uh, <laughs> uh, yep. 
Hey, man, <laughs> look at that dang old Hank getting into it, man. So, uh, which one is our boat? The Queeg. Boat? Look, um, Hank, truth is, Boomhauer and I don't come here to fish. We come here to, to search for sunken treasure. Huh. Isn't it great, Hank? We're gonna be millionaires! To be accurate, Bill, we'll be millionarios. You see, in 1898, the Spanish frigate Juan Sebastian was sunk in these waters. Its cargo, 50,000 gold pesetas, was never recovered. Through our exhaustive efforts over the last 20 years, Boomhauer and I have determined exactly where it isn't. But the ocean, she can't hold her secrets much longer. Yo, man. Ah, uh, sounds fun. I'm gonna go get my sunblock. <laughs> They're looking for sunken treasure, for God's sakes. Now, I understand it sounds a little stupid, but that's not the point. Don't you want to hang out with your friends? <sighs> All right. As long as you think it's stupid, too. Go. Fly, little bird. Bobby, where are the groceries? Mom, you are gonna be so proud of me. I took some initiative and invested our food money in this. A metal detector? Yeah. We're gonna be rich. Bobby, you are a genius. Treasure hunt. I'm on a treasure hunt. And we're past the breaker. Mr. Boomhauer, set a course for 26 degrees north, 97 degrees west. Yeah, man. Yeoman Purser Dotree, go below deck and fetch me the igloo cooler from the galley. Yes, Captain, my captain. So, uh, what do we do now? Do we all put on dive helmets and look for a big wooden chest with a lock on it? No. What we do is we put the boat on autopilot and wait for the sonar to find something. But while we're killing time, we might as well soak up some rays and catch some fish. Oh, well, all right. Fly! Joseph, honey, that fish doesn't want to play. Dale and Boomhauer think they're going to find treasure. Ridiculous. We're the ones who are going to find treasure. <laughs> A gold earring. I bet it belonged to a pirate. Uh, actually, that's mine. I must have just dropped it. What the hell you think you're doing? This speech is for locals only. Mom! Bobby, I've got this under control. Always good to meet a fellow metalhead. Quite a lot of keys you've got there. You must be a very important man. One of them starts with my truck. I found the rest. They're my trophies. Oh, well, if we find any more, we'll send them right your way. I said this. this is a public beach, sir. We all have the right to find other people's belongings and claim them as our own. All right, then, jurisprudence. You can scan the beach, but we go first. Right or first sweep? We don't have to listen to you. All right, all right, you get first sweep. Gentlemen, time for Russian beer let. One of these cans has been shaken. <laughs> One, <laughs> two... Three, go! Ah! <laughs> you got you, man. <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, here, Dale, take mine. I'll go get another one. Oh, my God. We're rich. Oh, it's the phone. What? Peggy, you were right. You were right about everything. I know, Hank, but I need you to be more specific. The treasure hunt. The guys have everything under control, and I'm just laying back, and it's a blast. See, I knew it would all work out. Oh, come on, man. Bill, do love them dang old cannonball, man. <laughs> That's not a cannonball. I'll show you a cannonball. Sha! Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, these guys are a bunch of crazy nuts, I tell you what. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Come on, Hank, cannonball! Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> I gotta tell you guys, I don't know the last time I had this much fun. Yeah, this may be the best trip ever. <sighs> so should we swim around to the other side? Why, is that some sort of a game? Uh, no, so we can climb back up the ladder. What are you talking about? The ladder's right there. But, fellas, how are we gonna get back in the boat? Yeah. Ah! <sighs> there's gotta be a way back up. No, there's not! How are we gonna get back up without the ladder? God dang old die, man. It's just old die. No one panic. 
In times of extreme duress, the body human is often imbued with super strength. I'll dive deep into the water and shoot up to the surface, propelling myself onto the boat. Gentlemen, I'll see you shipside. Shazam! Huh, I must have jumped clean over the boat! We're doomed. Oh ha! A charm bracelet and a cigarette lighter. Oh, yeah, up top. This stinks. Maybe we should just go swimming. Hey, Joseph! <laughs> your father will think we're idiots. Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll tell your father we were beaten up and robbed. Now punch me in the chin. Mom, I'm not gonna... Oh, yes! <gasps> What is wrong with you guys? Jumping off a boat without lowering the ladder? Hey, you jumped off too. How do you explain that, Albert Hankstein? Oh, I can't believe I'm gonna die because of you knuckleheads. Prepare for an eternity of me kicking your ass. Hey, man, the dang old last man to pull up and down the ladder, man. Easy, Boomhauer. You're not exactly smelling like roses either. If you hadn't goaded Bill into cannonballing, this deadly chain of events never would have been unleashed. I only did what I was told. Hey, man, I don't screw you, Gribble. Oh, blame the blamer. Classy, guys. Real classy. Hey! Hey! Dale, they can't see you. Conserve your energy. I'm getting so tired. I'm just gonna close my eyes for a minute. And... Bill, stay awake. Hey, man, I did it, man. I dang old broke off in them dang old propeller, man. Boom, how? Why'd you do that? There's gasoline everywhere. I don't, I don't know, man. The only way we're gonna make it through this is if we stay together. Now, everyone get near the boat. It's easier to spot. I said get next to the boat. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be something we can do. I suppose now would be a good time if anybody had anything to get off their chest. You know, before we meet our maker or makeress. Hey, man, I, I do, man. That dang old come about up. Well, you know, man, I'd, I'd dye my dang old hair, man. I have one, too. We lied to you, Hank. Once you left the A car, it was a disaster. We were at each other's throats the whole time. But what about your crazy taco adventure and, and the hats? We didn't have fun. We were too embarrassed to tell you. And Bill never said nacho cheese. It was a joke I got off a popsicle stick. Hey, man, you know, you're, you're the dang old glue, Hank. Huh. Well, I, I appreciate that, fellas. I have a confession, too, Hank. In a moment of weakness on a dark, rainy night, I slept with Peggy. No, you didn't, Bill. I know. Well, smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Wait, wait, give me that cigarette. Never. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Come back in five minutes. No, we can light the gas spill. It'll start a huge fire. Maybe that helicopter will... This is my last cigarette. Hey, Come man, on, you Dale. Don't do it, man. Okay, but if this doesn't work, I sure hope they have cigarettes in hell. He sees us. He sees us, yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Good work, kids. Best day we've had since those bales of marijuana washed up on shore. Wait, where's my... Uh... Looking for these? Oh, thanks. Must have dropped them. Uh-uh. Metal detector's code. Finders keepers, losers weepers. Dang, she's savvy. Here's our proposition. We'll swap your car keys for everything you found today. You're one tough beachcomber. Uh-uh. And the Star of David. Mr. Hill, I gotta hand it to you. That was pretty smart thinking. We saw that fire from quite a ways. No, I'm just the one who forgot to lower the ladder. Boomhauer's the one who broke open the gas line. Dale's the one who always carries an emergency match. And Bill, uh, well, Bill didn't make things worse. Nice try, Hank. We know we're screw-ups. If it wasn't for you, we would have been dead years ago. Now that we laughed in the face of death, I suggest we bring a little small-town justice into that biker bar. No. Am I hungry, Hank? Because I feel hungry. Well, we haven't eaten in a while, so... yes.
<laughs> Nacho cheese. Recolectan hoy. Uh, uh. Y ahora ustedes se pueden pesar. Vaya con Dios. In a wedding dress, Monsignor Martinez looks hot. Oh, that is one sexy priest. Este sábado, Eduardo Felipe, su mismo, va a aparecer en persona en Arlen, Texas. Oh, my God. The actor who plays Monsignor Martinez, Eduardo Felipe, is coming to Arlen. We have to go, Shugs. I bet he's even swarthier in person. I have been using videotapes of the show as a teaching tool in my Spanish class. I bet I could get the actor to show up and be a guest speaker. I would love to see the full-time teacher, Mrs. Pratt, try to follow me after that. I am uh, very excited to be in Arlen to promote the new episodes of my show. This will be our 11th season. I can't believe it's really him. Dio's for me. Uh, next. Hola, my name is Peggy Hill, and I am the three-time winner of the Substitute Teacher Award at Tom Landry Middle School. Well, maybe I should be asking for your autograph. Oh, no. Señor Felipe, my students and I love your show, and I was wondering if you could come to my Spanish class as a special guest. Oh, I'm sorry, Señora, but I have a rule about special appearances. I do them only for my charity work with the sick children or for paid vacations on the cruise ships. Dad, I accidentally used your toothbrush again. Throw it out. I got freaking Monsignor Martinez, and he is coming to my classroom tomorrow. Really? Wow. Mom, can I come meet him? You bet you can, but you have to pretend to be a sick child. Hmm. What? The man only does guest appearances for sick children, so what? Peggy, the boy ain't right, but he's not sick. Can I be in a bubble? Who is excited about watching this week's episode of Monsignor Martinez? Yeah! Yeah! Pare, senora. If you put that tape in, it will explode. The real Monsignor Martinez! Oh, senor, this is the sick boy I was telling you about. He cannot talk. Be brave, little soldier. From Monsignor Martinez. Senor, he should not be out of his bubble for too long. If the moment is truthful, then stabbing to death El Jefe with an icicle will come almost without conscious effort. Okay, kids. I'm afraid that is all the time we have with our very special guest. Aww. Oh, oh, in Espanol. Ay. 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 That was Don't the best or the coolest. Oh, gracias, gracias, Senor Felipe. The children loved you. Oh, the pleasure was all mine. Sometimes I forget we have many young viewers. Uh, we should probably do more episodes like the one about the monkey who smuggled the cocaine under his little hat. Senora, I am about to have some lunch. Please, join me. I noticed you have the same passion for teaching that I have for acting. <laughs> Gracias. Hey, say bye con Dios, dude. Hey, hey. Uh, do not look over. It will only encourage them. Bye con Dios, you pant load. Uh, Senora Hill, I have two children who are about to take entrance exams to private high school in America. A teacher like yourself with your passion could help them pass such a test. Would you be interested in coming to Mexico to tutor my children? Really? I can see I have surprised you with my offer. I will give it over with the loved ones. Oh, senor, I, I have something to confess. That boy in my classroom was not sick at all. Actually, that boy is my healthy son, Bobby. Senora Hill, I am an actor. I could tell right away that he was not sick. 
I do not mean to be unkind, but your son gave a terrible performance. Yes, he was terrible, wasn't he? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> but not as terrible as this fish. Waiter! Ike, are you going to the propane convention in Alberta? There's a propane convention in Alberta? It's exciting, isn't it? Oh, but you'll be so far away, in Canada. Well, yeah, but no distance is too great when it comes to propane. Mm-hmm, and I would have no problem with you going to that convention, even if it's for two weeks. Well, I don't see why you would. Hank, there is no propane convention in Alberta. What? But I have been offered a job in Mexico. The actor who plays Monsignor Martinez wants me to go to Mexico and be a private tutor for his children. It'll only be for two weeks. No way, Peggy. You only know this guy through the television. Oh, Hank, can't you see what an incredible opportunity this is for me? <sighs> this is a real double whammy for me, Peggy. You want to leave and there's no propane convention. But if it means that much to you, I guess you should give this guy a call and tell him yes. Thank you, Hank. Oh. In Hank while I'm gone. I would have had you practice with an egg first, but there's no time. <gasps> You're trusting me? I will do such a good job being you that you will not even know that you're gone. Well, I, I guess I should get going. Well, this is going to be the first time we'll be apart for more than a couple of days. Yeah, uh, Peggy, remember to take your glasses off before you take a nap on the plane. I will, Hank. Pe Peggy, not in the airport. I trust your flight was good? You know, I've never flown first class before. My husband says, coach is just as good, you get there at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. People who have never flown first class always say that. Uh, Senora Hill, niece are my children. Your students, Antonio and Cristina. Hola, Hola Senora, Senora Hill. Hill. Hola. Senora, you have had a long flight. May I suggest you start fresh mañana? Oh, mañana. Yes, of course. Mi casa es tu casa. Senora Hill, acting is not my only passion. I have another, making homemade wine. I too have another passion, Vogel. It is good to have many passions, yes? I have always said... Uh, these blackouts happen all the time in Mexico. One of my children was conceived in such a blackout. Oh! Would you like to taste my homemade wine, Senora Hill? Well, you have the most spectacular sunsets in Mexico. Yes, it is the pollution. My wife and I used to sit out here every night and watch the sun sink behind the city. If it's not too personal a question, where is your wife? She is, uh, how you say, with our ancestors. Oh, I am so sorry. I miss her very much. <sighs> the heart can get lonely. More wine? More wine. Well, who could say no to a glass of homemade Mexican wine? <laughs> This is actually pretty good, Luann. I got the recipe from Red Book. Which is actually a magazine. Well, I'm done. See ya. See ya. <gasps> oh, wait. I think you're supposed to excuse yourself from the table properly. May I be excused from the table? <laughs> yes, you may. He's a lovely boy. Who, Bobby? We do not answer the phone during dinner hour. Yes, we do. Hello. Hi, honey, it's me. Oh, how's the new job going? Oh, it's great. Senor Felipe took me on a tour of his mansion. He showed me his private gym and wine cellar, and I tasted some of his homemade wine. Huh, that sounds unnecessary. Oh, he was just being courtly. He's Latin. That's what they do. They are courtly. <sighs> oh, hi. You know, I should get some sleep. I start teaching tomorrow. Love you. Uh, back at you. Hmm. My children have promised me that they will listen to your every word as if you were their mother. For you, Senora Gil. Oh, a mango. One of the passion fruits. Gracias, Senor. <laughs> uh, it's from the children. Oh, right, uh-huh. The children. 
Gribble residence. Nancy, it's Peggy. Eduardo is flirting with me big time. I think he is coming on to me. Are you sure? Uh-huh. He used the wine on a balcony and watched the sunset. Where's the wife? Dead. Perfect. Did you flirt back? I do not know. Did you blush and giggle a lot when he talked? Oh, I may have blushed and giggled once or twice. <gasps> Congratulations, Shaggy. We're flirting. <gasps> but I gotta warn you. Don't enjoy it too much. Because there's this moment where there is no turning back. All of a sudden, you can't remember your husband's name. Your body goes limp. And then you were pulled down by the undertow of passion. You're drowning, Shug, but you don't care. I will never drown, because I am wearing the best life preserver there is. My marriage to Hank. Margarita. I want you, Margarita. I want you like I have wanted no other woman. And I am afraid you cannot have me, Eduardo, for I have given my heart to another, Hank Hill. Oh, I hate this Hank Hill for stealing your heart. Please, I must have you now, or I will throw myself off this cliff. I must refuse your advances for the second time. Eduardo, no! Think of the children! What is the capital of Oregon? Senora Hill, what is the capital of Oregon? You sure, senora? Who's the American here? Hey, Luann, did you buy any beer? I know you wanted me to get a case of beer, but it's not very healthy. So I got a case of V8 juice instead. But it's my week to bring the beer out to the alley. Uncle Hank, V8 juice has eight vitamins. Beer has one. Barley. Ugh. So Peggy phoned Nancy last night, and apparently this Eduardo fella's real sweet on Peggy. What? Dale, I think Nancy must have had a bad connection or something, because I talked to Peggy, and she said that Eduardo was just being courtly. Mm, no. Doesn't surprise me. Peggy's a very beautiful woman. Shut up, Bill. Why? Don't you think Peggy is beautiful, Hank? Oh, of course I do. I just don't feel the need to say it is all. <laughs> And that is why it is called Pittsburgh. Ah, senora. Senora, I need your help uh, in running some lines. Okay. You are the ambassador's beautiful daughter who speaks no Spanish. We hide in the drug lord's greenhouse. It is hot. Very, very hot and also very dangerous. You must stand close. Oh, well, dangerous greenhouse. The one thing more dangerous than my enemies is your beauty. Hold me tight. I so greatly fear these enemies who threaten us. Hush, Rebecca. I believe my enemies are coming. And I also believe that I am falling in love with you. <gasps> oh, God, that is good dialogue. I need an agua de fruta sprite. Uncle Hank, we need to have a serious talk about Bobby. No, we don't. Now... Bobby's at an age where we should be giving him his sex talk. Luann, stop trying to be your Aunt Peggy. You're no Peggy. You're fired. Well, I'm glad you're firing me. Because being Aunt Peggy is the most thankless job I've ever had. No wonder she ran away to Mexico. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry I frightened you, Senor Felipe. You did not frighten me. We need to talk. Uh, excuse me, Margarita, but those must be the roses I had delivered. Roses? Yeah, I know this is not what I brought you up here for, but would you mind getting the roses and bringing them to my bedroom? See? Si. Uh, could you those around? It needs a, a woman's touch, yes? Look, senor, we really need to talk. Uh, yes, I remember, but I need a moment to uh, prepare myself, and then I will give you my full attentions. He wants to kiss me much. Okay, soon you are going to be face to face with a naked, wet, Latin television star. All right? Then what, Peggy, huh? You'll forget. What's his name? Oh, God. What is his name? Hike! Hike, y'all. No, no, no. I will not give that man the thrill of me seeing him naked. No. Hey, Senora Hill, what in God's name are you doing? 
stop playing coy with me, Eduardo. I must insist that you leave, senora. But right, I am not leaving until you wrap this towel around you and you listen to what I have to say. Senor Felipe, I understand that my being an American woman may seem exotic. Ah, my wife has come home early. What? Your wife? <gasps> what do we do? What do we do? I will go down to greet her. Yes, yes, that's good. Go, 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 go. <gasps> the roses. <laughs> Senora Hill, where are the roses? Don't worry, I took care of them. Now, where is your wife? Uh, Senora Hill, this is my wife, Maria. Hola. I, I thought you were dead. No. I was with my ancestors. No, not my ancestors. My, uh, ay, como se dice? My grandparents. Yes, yes, I told her this. Senora Philippi, I just want you to know that nothing happened between us. Even though I was flattered by your husband's advances, I am a happily married woman. I am so sorry, but I will not be able to satisfy your lust for me. Oh, uh, wait, wait, I, I, I am sorry. I, I am not sure I understand. You, <laughs> you thought I wanted you... As a lover? <laughs> well, yes. Well, you couldn't have been more obvious. The mango, the roses. Uh, the roses were a surprise for my wife. Well, of course you would say that in front of her. But you cannot deny your constant flirting with me. I mean, the wine, the familiar use of two instead of Sue. I was just being a good host. Uh, senora, I am sorry, but I do not desire you in that way at all. You are, how you say, um, old. Old? I am not old. I am only 41. Uh, never, never take you as a lover. I got it. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Ah, uh, yes, it's quite comical. <laughs> Look, my wife finds it comical as well. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, hello, Strickland Propane. Hi, Hank. It's me. I just thought you would like to know that I'm coming home tomorrow. Turns out my students were really fast learners. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you're coming back. It's not the same without you. Uh, miss you. <laughs> My flight number is Mexicana Airlines 710. Okay, bye. <laughs> I have contacted another teacher for your children. Her name is Sandra Morgan. She's 61 years old. She is old. Well then, vaya con Dios. Uh, I meant that as myself, not as, you know, the character. No. <laughs> Welcome home to Texas, Peggy. Where is the truck? Oh, no, what's this on the floor? Hank, I, I have will pick it up in the morning. Well, hey, looks like chocolates. And, uh, wow, they're, uh, kisses. Did you do this? Yeah, I got it from the Red Book. Hey, I wonder where they go. Do they lead to our bed? Maybe. They don't lead to the bed. Nope, keep going. To the bathroom? Oh, okay, the tub. Hank, did you buy scented candles? I am tired, and I give up. What am I looking for? His and her sinks. Well, that's yours right there. Turn on the tap. Give it a try. <sighs> you don't like it. I, I love it. You know how you always complained that I was shaving and leaving hairs in the sink? Well, Joe Jack heard about this plumber that was going out of business. I can't believe it's really him.